uh, like it's just like he speaks from a, a Ouija board. And it's like it's a me, Luigi. Exactly. By the way, we're like actually live now. Oh, okay, excellent. Cool. Yeah, uh, we're actually actually live. I see. So I should, actually, I, notification Andrew. on my phone. I did. So I should probably stop talking about oh. all those bodies I buried in case the police are listening. Could cool. be that. Yeah. You you wouldn't cool. you wouldn't want that showing up on your resume. No. They're already well, tapping my phone. So I'm fine. going. I'm going to go ahead and post the link. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. So the reason this was so like complicated because I was trying. Like I had Southpaw walking me through this to try to like figure out how to how to do a live stream on Streamlabs instead of Streamyard. So hopefully it's not too shit. Hopefully my boomerness doesn't come out. But like it's it's running well so far. We got chat on screen. That's neat. I like it how you you took the time to publicly throw Southpaw under the bus just then. It's like whatever well, this is crap. It's all his fault. So fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this isn't my fault, guys. Southpaw is a bad teacher. That's what it is. Boomer. No such thing as bad teacher. Only bad student. All right. <laughs> that's how. That's how the line goes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not correct. Yes, Sp it speaking, is. Speaking as a teacher, I, I can confirm that is, that's exactly how that works. There are no bad teachers. Doesn't happen. <laughs> it really is. <clears throat> mm. All right. Well, uh, we're gathered here on this fine. Uh, morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time it is for you, because I woke up late and we were supposed to start like an hour ago. Um, because, well, this is interesting, right? Because South, because Southpaw, because Star Wars Theory made a video. This would have been a week ago at this point, right? And yeah. the stream is, I mean, really just meant to be a response to that. We thought it was a funny video. We want to make fun of it. But like a lot of things have happened between now and then that I, I feel is at least worth like touching upon mm -hmm. he it's 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 bizarre just how quickly this whole thing is developed so um what this is this is mainly just going to be us making fun of his dumbass video but like but like i i guess i guess it is worth mentioning yeah um so this all started because he put out a video titled uh where is it Titled, I'm done here. Disney is destroying Star Wars. What a joke. Rant. It's over. And, uh, yeah. Also, I think that might have just shown up on... Whatever. It doesn't matter. I gotta get better at this part of the job. I, I scrolled down on, uh... On Watch Together to read uh -oh. the title. And I didn't even realize <laughs> that that probably fucked with the... Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's all, it's all good. Um, yeah, and so we, we, we thought we'd, we thought we'd take a look at that, uh, I guess. That's pretty much the only thing that's happening here. Yeah. I'm, I'm going into this video completely blind, by the way, so this should be a... Uh, See, Andrew and I are the only ones who have seen it, so... We watched it and we were like, this would be hilarious. We need to get you guys to watch this. It's crazy. Yeah, it's so funny. Let's what do you this. say, hilarious? Am I gonna laugh or am I gonna end up wanting to, like, kill myself? No, oh, you're gonna uh... grab a gun ready to blow your fucking... Like, you're gonna be painting the ceiling red and pink. Ah, I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> There's gonna be like chunks of fucking skull shrapnel in the fucking ceiling. It's gonna be terrible. Wonderful. Uh, that sounds interesting. That sounds fun. You're welcome for the, uh, the description there. It's, yeah, it's I needed fun. to see that. <laughs> Alrighty then. Alright, indeed. You can count on me for anything. It's grossing the shit out of anybody. Cool. So are we ready to watch this video? <laughs> It's like that's quite yes. the boast and moving on i am <laughs> cool 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 so uh without further ado let us jump right into this is everyone is everyone in the watch together i, I see four people I, oh I i'm in uh Season see here. get your I'm ass joining. in here you fool i'm joining i'm you, joining you mother and fucker that's it i'm killing you oh <laughs> i've died before Oh, no. <laughs> Shut up! You, you, you don't sound like Palpatine. You sound like when Merlin tries to like his old voice in the, in the show Merlin. <laughs> I like that show though. Yeah, that's great. Well, it's, I like the characters. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, now come on, fucking play. Oh, wait, do I have to actually add it? Am I? God, I'm stupid. Hang on. Yes, yes, you are. I thought I already had <laughs> added it. That's the thing. It looks like I've added it. Have I not? I'm loving this, loving this professionalism, lads. It's great. Quiet, you, you. People are gonna be watching this, thinking you're the biggest dumbass ever. You wonder why I am. That's right, so it, true. It's in here now. 
We're just okay, normal cool. men. Why is it? Why did it skip We're to just Chinese normal game? men? This is my first time doing this. All mean? right, give me a break. All right, we ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I just got my Dr Pepper. I'm ready. Yes. You wonder why Star Wars is in such a state where no one is interested anymore. Um, I just want to highlight. Uh, I don't know if chat, chat, can you guys hear an echo when yeah. the video is playing? No, no, no. I'm not talking to you, Jolly. Shut up. Chat, YouTube chat, people watching this stream. Do you hear an echo when we're playing the video? Because I certainly hear the echo coming in from Sheev. It's from me? Yeah. yeah. You don't have headphones in, buddy, do you? I do. I don't He's believe deaf. you. Yep, I have headphones in. I'm using them right now. Why is it that I can hear myself or I'm hearing the video through you? You could have told me that before we started. No, people in chat I are literally saying no. couldn't. I literally couldn't have because I wasn't being able to tell. All right, fine, well, whatever. well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The chat can't hear it, so I can't right. hear it, so I don't care. Yeah, it's it's anymore. Yourself. Nobody gives a crap. We would be honored if you would join us. You hearing eight Southpaw? <laughs> I'm not hearing the it Kenobi now. The show, you know, it's a show that we had been waiting for. Arguably, no, not you know what? Screw arguably. It was the most important show that Star Wars could ever have released. After George sold it to Disney, we got what? Darth Vader and Obi Wan Kenobi. Right, so I guess we got to challenge that notion, right? Because that's a lot. What do yeah. you mean by that? I mean, I guess. What does that actually mean, though? Is by the thing, most how do you define important. most important? Well, that's the thing. Right? I mean, I'm guessing in terms of like, if someone was to say to me, "We have the OT, we have the prequels," what spinoff would be like the most obvious spinoff to do? Like, what's the what's the biggest story untold here? And I'd be like, it's probably the gap for Obi Wan between episodes three and four, right? That's the largest blank space, really. Pretty much. It's a and space like, yeah. though where they didn't really need to tell this story. I think the logical inference sort of shows what happens in that time period. True, I agree with that. But also, like, if someone was to say we could make a show about any of this, of anything in Star Wars that we haven't yet spoken about, what what's the biggest one left outstanding? I'm like, that's probably in terms of just like the characters at play, and the crucial, how crucial it is to the overall plot, and the amount of explanation, the amount of space we have to tell a story, that is probably the biggest. I'm yeah, willing sure. to concede that, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess if we're going by that exact definition. I'm assuming he's going by at least a similar one, but like these are the I... characters that are uh, like the closest to the originals that you could possibly get to without it being, you know, the sequels. Um, and, you know, it's, got, it's Obi-Wan and it's Vader, and it's set during a very precarious time period. I would argue, though, the most important thing for Disney to release since the buyout was their first show, Rebels. Just because that sort of sets the trend for what Disney Star Wars would be. The was first talking... sets the path for everything else. Was he talking about just uh, live action mm. shows, though? I think I think he means live action. But again, if we're he doing means it, live just... action, then I guess Kenobi. There's but if he's this... just talking shows in general, then There's always Rebels. this weird distinction where, like, um, people who claim to be, you know, fans of the animated shows and who see the shows that are animated as equal to live action, because obviously they're equal as mediums uh kind of just discount those they're like yeah well we're not counting those uh, i don't really understand that mindset i don't right. either animation is for children true of course but like, yeah, no, these, yeah, movies, the Wars these movies are for children the, the space wizard movies for children remember ah! <laughs> like with with rebels though it's it's it basically set the trend for what disney star wars would be which i mean that's not entirely true, actually, on my part, because well, uh, Rebels actually has good content in it. Um, but I'd say it's at the trend for lots of cameos, references, Easter eggs, and then, of course, later on, just absolute cannon-breaking shit. Bullshit like the Pergil, bullshit like the World Between Worlds, and then it just snowballs from there. And then, of course, Force Awakens comes in and, um, you know, sort of does a one-two sucker punch to the franchise. Jolly, I guess what I would ask is, by the metric that you've used just now to say that the Kenobi show might be considered, like, the most important, where does Solo rank in that? Because that's, you know, that's a legacy character from the OT, who was pretty prominent I, I, as a main character, and, like, it's set during the same I, time uh... period. I'd put it at just maybe a fraction under in importance, just because like, obviously Han before he meets Luke and Leia, while we like while we care about him, he's not galactically relevant to the overall story before okay. that. Um, that means, and also like it's a film, I guess, rather than a TV show. But I I would agree that if I was managing LucasArts in 2016 or LucasFilm in 2016, 
I'd have put Solo and Kenobi pretty close to the top of my list for like we need to make sure we get these bloody right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Solo bombed, and then and then they were like shit. Yeah. No more recasting. That's what they learned. That's what. That's the lesson to take from that. That's... Yeah. Well, and then idiots <laughs> yeah, like this are going to be the ones who are going to be fucking praising the shitty deepfake technology. Yeah. Uh, I mean, theory. So theory obviously was a huge fan of the Mando season two finale. Um. It's obviously, uh, especially <laughs> now. Okay, so I guess this is where we get into like. So after this video came out, you know, obviously people like on Twitter and everywhere else was giving him flack because obviously he said a bunch of really stupid incendiary things in this video. Uh, so he put out like a tweet, basically like inviting people on to disagree with him. It ended up, of course, being just another circle jerk. The only person he invited on was Mahler. And uh, Mahler was, like, super cordial and kind. And, uh, I mean, he basically just, like, tucked his tail in and nodded along and agreed to everything Mahler said. When Mahler brought up, like, Mando Season 2 and, like, Luke's portrayal on that, he sort of just went like, well, yeah, but it's the best that we could get because Disney or whatever the fuck. Like, yeah. he tried to argue that basically, like, they're, they're two separate entities and, like, the best of the best that Disney could possibly put out with Dave Filoni and John Favreau at the helm obviously pales in comparison to Lucas Star Wars because Lucas Star Wars is just so good. I like the idea that, you know how after uh, Ahsoka people were like, Anakin and Vader are two halves of a whole, but like even though they're <laughs> diametrically opposed... I like the idea that Star Wars Theory has a similar Jacqueline Hyde thing going on where he's got like his, his his solo streaming like persona and then he has the persona that when like people come on who can actually argue and who have large fan bases <laughs> and he just like nods along and he's like yes sir of course sir absolutely sir whatever you say sir I mean, that's exactly well, because he's what a cowardly happened, bitch yeah. he has no spine I mean that is exactly what happened yeah it was it was kind of embarrassing to watch oh he's pathetic as shit <laughs> to yeah. be completely honest he's a fucking bitch but yes, let's let's not poison the well. Let's proceed with the video. Maybe you know, maybe maybe he has some good points. I don't know. I've not seen this video. He no. could tell us genius. No, no well, he really doesn't. I, I actually am Spoiler curious, alert. Though, for the two of you here who haven't seen this video. A lot of clips of this were shared around on Twitter, so I'm I'm assuming you guys have seen some of those, right? What what do you guys know about this video already? I mean, literally nothing. I literally know nothing about okay. this. Cool. I'm Perfect. only aware of him like referring to people who love Andor as cereal eaters. <laughs> oh. oh yes. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> so we also enjoy eaters. discussing the Renaissance. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that's, I'm sorry that's, to that's the clip that part for Jolly. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. no. It's like, I saw what, what he just said. I saw the clip where he was. Was like saying, oh, if you like Andor, it's because you're like you're French and you have a mustache mm -hmm. and you like eating like posh cheeses. And I'm just being, I'm being like, I mean, I am French. <laughs> but I don't like cheeses. Yeah, he, he was like, like, it's cool if you go to film school. Well, and I'm like, oh, oh well, I mean, Andrew. I go to film school, but <laughs> Andrew, I just remembered, I was gonna also double this up with like the Andor criticism bingo card. Do you want to pull that up and start? Oh yes. uh, checking stuff off because that's okay. one of them. Andor's fan base is pretentious. <laughs> Uh, well, let's, let's 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 wait till we get there, and then we can check it off. Yeah. Well, I just want to have that up and ready to go. Meanwhile, uh, TK saying he hates Sheev talks. I do too. Me too. Me meanwhile, uh, while so Jolly's the, the 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 French guy, and Andrew's the the guy who's a film student. I'm just the guy that likes cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got a mustache. It's part of my beard. I got oh, a yeah. mustache too. I'm it's part of my beard. My beard back. I it's went just... to film school. It's been a while. I got a mustache. I I kind of enjoy cheese. I, I don't. Know. I do technically own a beret. So I mean, I mean to be honest, I, with my you know with my PFP, I definitely can't claim to not be pretentious. I literally have a monocle. <laughs> <You're> super pretentious. <laughs> you have a top hat. It's a it's a bowler That's a hat. Bowler hat. Come on, hat. Chief. Fool. You have a cowboy hat. Yes, I'm wearing a Stetson. <laughs> Yeah, no, Jolly, Jolly, why do you no, have a sombrero? It's a, That's insensitive. It's, a... <laughs> it's no, actually, it's... I'm wearing a. What's the the Jewish skull cap called? I do know the word, but it's escaping. Uh, Yamaka. Yamaka. Not the fez. Who just said was the fez? Yamaka. It's the platypus with a fez. It's a yamaka. Well, I just, yeah, it's a yarmulke, but I, just, I like the idea that it's almost like, what's that, Jew, the Jewish hat? It's like a fez. It's like, <laughs> that would really change perceptions, I think. No, he's got a fucking <laughs> turban. It's no. It's, uh, I'm, it's actually, a, it's, I'm actually Sikh. I wear a turban. Actually, nice. actually, it's very clearly a pork pie hat, like Heisenberg's. Oh, <laughs> I, I hate, yeah. I hate those hats so much. 
Why? Uh, I, just, I don't know. There's something about that. Maybe it's because like whenever I played uh, a video game which allowed you to customize your character with a hat, it always was the ugliest hat. Like in Red Dead Redemption 2's character model, there is a pork pie and it's the most horrible little hat on John Marston's head. I was like, no, take this away immediately and burn it. I feel like we're learning something about Jolly here. My hat. Yeah, my, my love of hats. My hat couture. Oh, right. by the way, uh, if if you guys keep spamming Sheev Talk's name in chat, uh, we're going to have to have a moderator like you to knock it off because it... Are, are they highlight. doing that? I haven't been able to look at chat. Uh, well, I saw that TK did it, and I realized, like, oh, oh yeah. I, I guess the cat's, the cat's out of the bag. Yeah, don't, let's don't do that. Let's not have spamming. Like just don't, general rule of thumb, don't spam in chat. Yeah, don't don't do that. That's all right. We'll be, we'll be nice about it. Don't you know? Don't do it. <clears throat> and as long I'm as banning you everyone. Yes. I won't be nice about it. I'll fucking destroy you if you fucking spam in the chat. <laughs> all right. You no, know, it's, right. it's, it's a until I take over. It's a free country, and you can spam as all this much as you want. Once I take over, you will be put to death. But until exactly. then, exactly. I don't. Uh, B says but I don't down speak like a bad dog. I'm like I'm not saying that there's spam in chat. It's this is a preemptive warning. Yeah, just don't do it. Spam song. Spam. Spam. Yeah. Spam. Spam. Anyway, all right, let's, let's carry on. In between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, we got Anakin Skywalker and Obi Wan Kenobi, as well as Luke Skywalker and Leia. Literally the main characters of Star Wars. The most important part. I'm. Again, like I know what he means, but like Luke is barely in the show. I wouldn't even count him as a character in. I mean, until episode six, that is, and only because he became a plot device for Reva's character. Yeah, um, and somehow forgot going into his adulthood that what lightsabers looked like. I would agree, of course, that like if if someone said, "Hey, we're gonna make an Obi Wan Kenobi show," I'd be like, "All right, cool." So the main characters from the OG saga are obviously like in this show are gonna be Obi Wan and Luke, uh, and like Owen and Beru, obviously. Um, obviously, Leia is not going to be in it because why would she? Um, Vader's not going to be in it because we need to keep them the fuck away from each other. Um, that's that's the other thing. It's like th this this idea that there that this show is like super important because it has Obi Wan and Vader on it uh, presupposes that Vader would even be in the Kenobi show, and it's like, but he shouldn't be. Yeah, he I, definitely I assume... shouldn't. Be. I'd assume that, like, the, the most that you could do is, like, I don't know, the huts are encroaching on the Lars family's safety, and Obi-Wan needs to do some some type of work that Owen's not even going to be fucking aware of to keep them, like, safe, basically. Pretty Something much. like well, that, like, very very small scale, n nothing intergalactic, nothing to do with Vader or the Empire, just Obi-Wan's doing some I mean, clandestine adventure. Yeah, it has to be a personal story for Obi-Wan rather than some grand scale operatic. Exactly. Like, I yeah. just it, want and, Obi -Wan and Jolly and I have talked way. about this before. Like we if we were writing the Kenobi show, I think Owen's going to actually get a promotion in terms of uh plot oh, relevance. Yeah. Like he's going to basically be he's going to be the Deuteragonist. Yeah. He, he and oh, Obi-Wan are going to be in the in this uh journey together because we, we got a lot of development for Owen that needs doing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you can still have Vader in, in that kind of personal story. It just can't really be him, right? You can have all sorts of, like, trauma flashbacks or, you know, visions in the Force or whatever. But you just mm. can't have actual Vader turn up. I mean, uh, I think Madvocate's the one who suggested in his Kenobi video that, like, you know the role that Kingpin plays for Matt in uh, Daredevil Season 3? That's basically what Anakin oh, right, should have yeah. been for Obi-Wan. Well, just the ghost on his shoulder. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. yeah. That would that yeah, could be agree. really, really cool. Anyway everything and what kind of a budget does it get it it gets not even less than andor which i think had like 130 million or 110 million or, or maybe even more than that what was the budget for andor hold on here before i even get ahead of myself <laughs> you guys are gonna see such a more so he's really upset that andor had a 250 million dollar budget um just keep oh, that in no. mind I don't he, think he knows how budgets work. He thinks Andor is <laughs> good, guys. Trust me, he thinks it's good. More real side of me as we push into 2024 because I'm fed up. I'm really tired. I'm really fed up. People that don't like me already don't like me. People that love me already love me. And I'm here for you guys, and I'm not here for anyone yeah. else. At the end of the day, I'm here <laughs> oh, for George God. Lucas. I'm here for Star Wars. I'm here for uh, myself. I'm sure George and really appreciates that. <laughs> I'm sure George is embarrassed as shit if he knows of your existence. If he theory. does, I'm, I imagine he does. I'm, I'm sure someone somewhere has told him about Star Wars theory. Maybe he even looked him up out of curiosity, and he probably watched one of his videos and was like, "Oh." 
Yeah, I mean, uh, Star, Wars theory is, Star Wars theory is basically the reason Harrison Ford hates Star Wars fans. It's idiots like him. Entitled or like, rats? Yeah. Like, you know how Alec Guinness met, like, a Star Wars fan who had, like, seen the movie a hundred times, and he only agreed to, like, like sign an autograph from if he agreed to never watch the movie again? Turns out that kid and, was like, Star Wars theory. <laughs> <laughs> What that, a twist! That, no, it reminds me of that shit post of like, oh, one day Zack Snyder saw that like there was a kid that was really upset because he wanted to be a filmmaker, and so Zack Snyder bought him a camera and told him that he'd be a filmmaker one day, and that kid turned out to be Martin Scorsese. <laughs> <laughs> I love those stupid ass memes. <laughs> yeah, I love it so much. <sighs> Side note, that, that Ewok in the background is creeping me the fuck out. Yeah. Like, that, <laughs> that thing's soulless eyes are boring into my into the heart See, of me. if I had a setup like this, and I had that Ewok behind me, I would make it like the Annabelle doll, where, like, randomly it just changes positions in the frame every once in a while. Every, every, like, repeat, like, every successive stream, it gets, like, a little bit closer, and then by, like, stream 10, it's, like, raised its arm with a knife. Yeah, you're like, like on stream, you're like, all right, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. So you turn the camera off and then you turn it back on and it's in a completely different area. <laughs> it's just sitting in the chair. You're like, you're like <laughs> wriggling on the floor behind the chair. Like you can't really, like the chair's obscuring you, but it kind of shows like your leg twitching out. <laughs> Star Wars used to be. Let's get a few things out of the way. Not everything that Disney has created <gasps> is total garbage. I, maybe you know 80 90 percent but there is that 10 percent that is actually who wants to guess what he's going to list off in terms of what <sighs> well as Disney's good made is good uh you guys are gonna have fun with this season seven of the clone wars mm -hmm. i think it's gonna be up there i think he's gonna say tales. that tales of the jedi was up there what else is he gonna put up there he's not gonna put andor uh, mando mando season <laughs> one and two probably i'd say and two yeah i I I I I'll I, I'll say this now. I only remember a few of the things he lists, only because I'm just like, of course you'd put them up there. Rogue One? Would he put that up there? I don't no, think he listed. There's Rogue no one. way he'd think Rogue One was good. He would put the Vader scenes up there. He would put everything else. I'm uh. actually surprised. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, I, I guess Vader I guess I'm not surprised by this, but like, I guess I was I wasn't really thinking about it because I haven't thought about Star Wars theory in years. But like, he really likes Tales of the Jedi. Like he puts that up like above. Yeah, he like, well, yeah, he's else. a felony dick sucker. Yeah, <laughs> but then, but then again, he was talking about it on stream with Mahler. And Mahler was like, "Oh, I haven't even. That's not really on my radar because I don't watch the animated shows." And he was like, "Yeah, um, the the Ahsoka episodes are kind of whatever, but like the Dooku episodes, that's where it's at." And it's like, "Well, that's three out of six episodes of the show that you just said are whatever. That's half the show." I, I'm sorry. You guys, uh, I, I have to harken back to when you guys were talking about uh, putting the e like if you guys had an Ewok like that, you'd put it in different positions. <laughs> yeah, I think it's I think it's regrettable that he never took that Ewok to one of the SAG Afra SAG after strikes because then it would have been a wicket on a picket. Uh, that's contingent on, of course, him being pro strike, and I honestly kind of doubt it. No way. No, no, no he's no an, way. he loves this there's, AI garbage. There's uh. no way. Yeah. I feel like he'd say he was. Like, I feel like if he was ever asked, he'd probably just say he was, and then not just, lift a finger. I just feel like, like oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's not even let's not even call it let's not even call it anti strike because it's not really an anti strike position. It's an anti craft position, mm. right? It's just anti art at that point. You're like, oh, I like content and I want it shoveled down my throat. Cool. Well, that's the that's the Do mentality. It, that why don't you write your own fan fiction then? That's the mentality that leads to us getting the Obi Wan Kenobi show in the first place, right? Like, well, exactly. We never needed uh, it. We never this needed the, it. This is the funny thing, right, about this whole like. Ugh, culture this ecosystem of people like star wars theory is that they'll complain bitterly about like what they perceive as a lack in quality but the res the shows we're getting are directly the result of people like him and what they consume like disney yeah. wouldn't keep on making these shows if people like him weren't consuming them mm -hmm. also i just kind of realized that uh I, I need to keep a closer eye on chat because i did miss a super chat from joe so i'm gonna read it out now oh if you guys oh. like if you guys are looking at the chat at all please just let me know if i miss a super chat and i'll i'll make sure yeah. i'll catch them uh meeting natasha and I ivana uh sabine and uh shin's actresses later this year and i'm gonna ask them if Sabi if if shin bean is canon thank you for your work friends oh uh, thank you um, please please 
God. I mean, like, Joe, feel free to ask them, but please, God, let that not be the case. Please, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. They look at each other once, and everyone on Twitter is like, oh my God! She, she, okay, so she, she, she's having a character. She and I have discussed this before with, with reference to other characters, because I think this happened with Bo as well, right? And, and Mando, where people, like, mm -hmm. there was a rumor that came out, and I think then uh, the actress, Christy, uh, Chris, uh, what's it called? Uh, Katie Sackhoff? Katie Sackhoff. Confer yeah, confirm this later that there was originally an intention to like maybe like tease a ship between Din and Bo, which I would have, I think would have been a huge mistake. So I'm glad they didn't do that. But also, people were like, "Oh, but that can't be true because she's a lesbian." And I'm like, "Where have you pulled that from?" Uh -huh. And they're like, "Well, you know, we just kind of assumed she was." I was like, "Well, I don't care. That's I don't not canon." Care. <laughs> well, um, oh, it's like a video that. on the internet. Hey, Canons and canon is not the same thing, people. It's like assuming that Obi Wan is straight and therefore he can't be bi. Also, can people just not be allowed to have like? I say this as a bisexual person. I'm kind of tired of a. Every time a bisexual person gets shown on uh, in fiction, they have to be paired off with someone of their own sex, or somehow they're not really bi, mm -hmm. which is really yeah. biphobic. But putting that to one <laughs> side, it just really annoys me that like, every time we have like any kind of chemistry between any two actors in any show, people are like, "Oh, they have to fuck now." <laughs> I'm like, can people not be, just pl be platonic? Or even just like, <laughs> just not be friends? Like, I, I, I don't understand why people are getting chemistry from Shin and Sabine. Joey, they literally... see what you did? You sent Jolly off. They hatefully, they hatefully they stared looked... at each other all the time. She stabbed Sabine and, then, and, that's, and tried to choke her to death, and that's it. That's their entire interactions. What if she's into that, though? Could May, I, oh, God. No, it, for real though, like I mean, with the with these fucking shows and stuff, people don't actually want characters; they just want self inserts to be able to say, "Oh, look, someone like me dating somebody that's hot in this show." It's not; it has nothing to do with actually wanting. I don't even think it's that because I characters. think that's a bit, of a, a bit of a cruel interpretation. I mean, sure, there are some people who think that, I it's cruel. not the majority. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I think cruel. for most people. It's more like almost like Dave Filoni asking, like it's just it's action playing with your action figures of like oh I've got two action figures let's make them smooch. And I'm like okay that's that, that's a fine impulse or well, not fine but like that's an impulse that is like understandable and you're entitled to it. But can we please not do it with every character pairing because it's just cheap and kind of boring to listen to actually. Yep. Mm. Anyway. Oh, really Anyways, amazing the bear. mandalorian season one and two tales of the jedi the clone wars season seven rebels ahsoka up until episodes seven and eight <laughs> but what i'm trying oh wait hang on <laughs> sorry, sorry hang on hang on hang on, hang on. Yeah. i just i just had a thought uh joe when you meet shin if you could just give her my number i'd be very grateful yeah if you could just, you could just tell her about my channel and how i would love it if she would spit in my mouth um <laughs> Okay, bit weird. Give her a strap yeah. on with my name on it. I, okay, I, you made it worse. I was, I was just like, I was just like putting it out there in a romantic sense, like, oh, I'd love to take that girl out on a date. She seems really lovely and and very attractive. And then you guys are like, cool. I want to call her mummy. I want her to dominate me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say she that. Quickly delete your video right now. <laughs> that shit, shit, shit. No, that's is being over. fucking marked in history. Oh. Or do what I did and just delete the section you talk about Shin and just say she's perfect moving on. Do I on. talk about I do for like twenty seconds. Uh Joe said also, it's about the as much said, time as the show spends on developing her as a character, so that's not <laughs> natural. Joe said, see, I love you, but that's a that's kind of a fucked interpretation. Yeah, and <laughs> it's I mean it's the it's the it's the truth you don't want to hear. I'm just I'm just saying what I've observed, and if it's not too comfortable to hear I'm I'm like, sorry. Like I, like, I'm just putting it how I see it. Well, I, th I think I think it's I think it's directed at me, right? The idea that I was just like I'm frustrated with everyone shipping everyone. Um, I I don't know why that's a fucked perspective. I'm not saying you can never ship think, characters. I'm just saying, saying that we need to do more I, careful than that. I think they're they are directing that at C and him saying that, oh, okay. like, it's like self insert and projection. You know, yeah. I want to, I want to be this hot character making out with this hot character. Yeah, um, I mean, like, I, mean I, I can get where it might come off I as mean, a rude thing for me to say, but, like, it is something that I, I, I do have, think that so. that can come off as rude, but, like, as someone who's dealt with, like, fans of the Flash TV show for years, um, mm -hmm. those people are real. Oh, um, I've, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've dealt to be with fair, them. The, to be fair, the old city shippers. <laughs> West to be Allen fair, it's an understandable... Wait, what? I, I said West Allen shippers. They're yeah, well... Insufferable. Well, but like especially the well, also the Olicity shippers oh, from Arrow. God, yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry. What were you saying, Jolly? 
After I forgot, I've forgotten. I oh, you were saying to be fair. <laughs> yeah, but I say I say that to start off a lot of sentences, so That's I've lost true. track now. I, I'm gonna continue the video now. I just thought that that was a funny list that Star Wars Theory uh, listed, like for. Hang on, put it back good. five seconds because I feel like I've forgotten it already. I think it's funny that I cut it off. Like Ahsoka became bad at seven and eight. Nowhere <laughs> before that. <The> amazing. Yeah, <laughs> Mandalorian season one. And... You got Episode Mandalorian one season one and two. Two. Tales of the Jedi. The Clone Wars season seven. Rebels, Ahsoka up until episodes. I love how Rebels is the one that's so so. Even though like uh, of this lineup he lists, it's probably the best of them. <laughs> I think I'm suffering internal bleeding from that list. Yeah, Mando season one and two are shit. Let's just be real. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. see at least season two. Come on, like season there, two there are shit. some endear there are some redeemable qualities of season one. Um, I'd still say it's pretty bad though. Season two is one... entirely predicated on the biggest fucking contrivances imaginable. There is only one scene in the whole of season two that I even vaguely think I, I like, and that's the Mayfield shooting the Imperial officer. Mm -hmm. Which is ironic too, because in that uh, in that very scene, he's talking about how the yeah. Empire and stuff will just throw away soldiers and stuff, and they're disposable to them, and you know their human lives mm -hmm. and all that. And then in that very scene, after shooting the officer, which the officer makes sense, shoot him. Uh, then he just mows down a bunch of stormtroopers and blows up the base after. Well, to be fair, they're shooting was... at him. Yeah, I mean, I don't they're know if he had another option him. there. He didn't have to blow was... up the base when they were escaping. Well, I, also, his, uh, I think my issue just... with that scene is more just like, it's trying so hard to be that one scene in Inglorious Bastards, where like it's really tense and they're all sitting around at the, at the table. Uh, Mando's trying to keep his cover, uh, but Mayfeld is just kind of like, yeah, by the way, fuck you. I hate you. I hate the Empire. Piece of shit. And then he kills him. It's like, oh, cool. Thanks. Listen, I was going Bill through. Burr, I allow it. I, I was going through season two before uh, Mahler did. I think that like I I got like I was watching it. I was like four episodes ahead of him. Like he just hadn't started season two, and by that point, I I saw the scene where Mando grabs an arm, just just like a bundle of grenades, and then just runs straight into a bunch of enemy gunfire, and just willingly gets blasted right in the armor. And I'm just seeing like the way that his his armor takes all of the blasts and i see that and i just message more i'm like so there's going to be a, there's going to be one scene from these next episodes that you guys are going to watch that you guys like you will need to clip and just put on twitter as soon as you've seen it and when like when you're seeing it you will know what i'm talking about it's in like episode three or something it's just it's the scene you'll know what i'm talking about and sure enough, he clipped that exact scene. He knew exactly what I was talking about. He posted it to Twitter. I mean, it's, so it's probably the most egregious, it's the most egregious like, use of the plot armor. I mean, Beskar's already plot armor incarnate, but that is one of the most egregious scenes of it being so. Fucking hilarious. By the way, TK, don't freaking ping me uh, in the in the chat. Don't do it, We TK. just went over this. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, uh, Mando season one and two are bad. And he listed Tales of the Jedi, which I, I've said this to you guys before, I think is mostly shit. It has the one episode that I genuinely tout as good, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, which is, of course, episode four. <sighs> uh, Jolly, you've seen Tales of the Jedi, right? Yes, I have, yeah. Uh, do you, I mean, do you agree with that stance? Or... I, I do, yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, is that, I, I, so I agree with you, that that is the only good episode. There are bits in <clears> other episodes where... <laughs> And this is a very Filoni-esque phenomenon, right? Of like, I like the idea of it, but not the but not the reality, but not the, the not truth. truth. <laughs> yeah. Got a super um, joke, by the way. I did. Like, yeah. I, thank you. I like the idea of um, Ahsoka tr trying to get to Padme's funeral, uh, or at least trying to be there. Although the way in which the show then portrays her doing that is beyond hilariously incompetent and inept. Mm -hmm. That um, oh, that entire just, episode is just dog yeah. shit. Because I think there's some really interesting... Like, honestly, I'd have, I'd have preferred it if, like, she wasn't in threat of being caught for there. Like, if she'd come in later and just, just talks to some of, like, the people who were there. Like, it would have been fascinating to hear, like, Ahsoka talk to, I don't know, Padme's sister, maybe. Oh, but, man. Because well, yeah, we don't get much on Padme's sister, but she is a character that exists. Anakin that, has nieces and nephews. That could have been the entire episode, is just her at Padme's funeral, talking to people. Like, it didn't have to be, oh, she's on this farm, and oh, the Inquisitor found her and then died in like three seconds ah. and then his mask deflated for some reason well after Marek, i don't know if that's just not a thing that all inquisitors do they just deflate they're all wacky wavy inflatable men with lightsabers 
<laughs> yeah, it it fly. I'm gonna I'm gonna read out the super chat now from Bullet Andy for five dollars. I saw Mahler conceded some things like there's a contingent of Andor fans that are really annoying on the debate, which he's never said before. I'd be I mean I'd concede that. Of course, every show is gonna have their uh, you know their annoying fans. Um, Andor is not an exception. Uh, every single show. This oh yeah, not... I mean for example, uh, you know Pirates of the Caribbean is a great movie, but just <laughs> one guy who will not shut the fuck up about it. it just I know, so right? annoying. He yeah, sounds South like a possible prick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, damn you, Southpaw. I'm not... Yeah, exactly. No, listen, 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 I'm not annoying about any TV shows, all right? <laughs> Southpaw has a seven-foot sculpture of Donald Logue in his bedroom. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just in his bed. He's got, like, a, a Donald Logue body pillow. <laughs> it's a, it's a seven-foot sculpture of Donald Logue made out of Lego, mind yes. you. Yes. Yeah, it has to be made out of Lego, or it's not real to you. Donald Lego. <laughs> uh, I was thinking of a wax sculpture, but like that's even better. But yeah, then, I, it's, it sells the Jedi seven foot sculpture of Michael Raymond James, also known as Brick Pollock. Uh, Brick uh, Pollock. Just to just to get back to the topic of the video, is Tale of the is Tales of the Jedi like generally well regarded? I don't really know how the fandom at large views I it. I think everyone forgot it. Like, it's yeah, it is one of those shows where like everyone was like, "That was really good," and then twenty seconds later, they were like, "Anyway." <laughs> so basically, like most Disney content. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I I thought it was pretty pretty bad, pretty mediocre for the most part, uh, with with the exception of Episode Four. Um. <laughs> what are you talking about? Ba Baby Ahsoka episode was so good. I I was just I remember sitting there watching that episode, just like, just like so. I don't I don't want to say bored, as then that's like a criticism, like oh this episode was boring, <clears throat> but I was bored because I was just sitting there and I was like, there's not this is this episode is nothing. This is a nothing episode. I it's just it was the meme right of like Dave Filoni needs to uh, show every single second of Ahsoka's life except for what she was doing in the OT. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> anyway, here's her birth. Like, oh, <laughs> thank you. For Thanks, that. Dave. You fucking Honestly, idiot. you know what I actually would have liked to have seen. It would have been quite fun. Like if it was like a ten minute episode, it would be like Plo Koon trying to teach Baby Ahsoka, like playing with her with like little toys and stuff. I think D Dad Plo Koon would have been fun that to been watch. Neat. I, 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 I don't know. I just, I feel like already we're in a bad spot. If it's like, all right, we have an episode. This is a six episode limited series of like that it's called tales of the jedi it's an anthology series it can be about literally any jedi across any span of the timeline uh what are we doing and it's like cool we have an episode about baby ahsoka I'm just like no no stop <laughs> i, I, I want to see the episode with the magazine Mos start smacking dave on the head with it <laughs> i want i want to see the episode where master sanube goes down to the pharmacy and picks up his dementia meds <laughs> Well, I mean, you joke, but, like, literally anything that isn't... And, again, I liked the Dooku episodes, and I think at least one or two episodes. If, if this is going to be a, a, a longer show than six episodes, like, you can devote some episodes to showing Dooku's, like, slow progression to the dark side. That's fine. But, like, it's called Tales of the Jedi. Make it about Jedi we haven't seen before, or, like, if we have, we haven't seen them very prominently. You know, like... How about Sifo Dyas? Sifo Dyas. Yeah, yeah, so Yadel. If Yadel. I mean, Yaddle's, Yaddle's now very dead. <laughs> um, I would say there's two Jedi who very much need to have their stories fleshed out who who haven't. And yeah, the first is Sifo Dyas and how he's involved in the clone conspiracy and to what degree that all went down, actually. Because even the Ark and Clone Wars that tried to explain this didn't didn't explain it. Mm -hmm. But the other one is, um, and I would have thought this was the obvious one, is Barriss Offee. What happened yeah. to her? Oh, how about, and there was a... Uh, uh, how about, about Yariel Poof? <laughs> well, we know what happened to him. He ended up in the <laughs> canteen. I want to see more of that, though. I, no, I've seen people talking about, like, oh, Tales of the Jedi Season 2 should show uh, Balin, like, finding Shin or whatever. Uh, and I'm like, why? okay, fine. Well, it, and, and, like, what that made me think of was, like, you know, since these shows were kind of being worked on by the same person at the same time, he could have easily just had an episode, like, introducing this character and it's Balin. And, he, like, we see him going on a mission and maybe he finds a little girl... And we're like, wow, that was a really strange episode. We didn't see, like, we don't we don't know who these characters are. This was a new environment. Oh, they're going to be prominent figures in the Ahsoka show. Okay, cool. That could have actually, like, generated some interest, and we could have had a little bit of knowledge about them going into the show. I'm just imagining Balin having, like, a Mufasa and Simba moment with Shin, where he takes up to, like, the top of a large rock, and he's like, <laughs> you, see that you see that fandom out there, Shin? One day you will grow up, and a bunch of internet perverts will, like, leer over you. Hey. That, that is your future. Wow. <laughs>
Anyway, I, I'm including, my, punch me in I'm the including face. myself in that bracket. I want I want her to punch me in the fucking jaw. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Seven and eight. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, not everything that has been created under Disney's umbrella was garbage. Now, mind you, those things were created by Dave Filoni and John Favreau. <laughs> Shut the fuck uh, up. There's the qualifiers. Yeah, we we got we got let, let, wait, 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 let the man talk. Yes, let the yep. man talk. No. But I digress. Obi Wan Kenobi, mm -hmm. the most important Star Wars project since Disney purchased Lucasfilm from George Lucas in 2012, and it gets the lowest budget of any Star Wars show to date. I don't think that's true, actually. Can we... In theory, well, shouldn't it? I was about to say, does he provide focus on this? I don't think he did. Well, so um, he's looking at this figure here, obviously, the 90 million dollar budget uh, as a, as a, as compared to She Hulk's. Uh, two hundred twenty-five million, I think it was. Um, it's not the budget. It's not the. It's not the, the we'll, problem. Is we'll get. We'll get to that. But like, I'm just thinking yeah. about it, and like, um, look at Boba Fett. Surely had less budget than Kenobi. I would say probably. Actually, we look, look this up. Uh, Here's um, the thing, too. When it comes to budgets for uh, Star Wars shows, we basically only have information on um, on Disney Plus. We don't really have any, any information on the uh, actual televised Star Wars shows. From like a hundred million, one hundred and five million. Like Rebels, like Resistance. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah. Where the fuck we did don't... that money go? Uh, the Mando know. episodes. Reshoots. <laughs> I I I love this frame that we're on. Personally, I love this. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah. This is this is fantastic. We need this as a sticker in your servers. See? <laughs> yeah, no, we're doing that. I'm, I'm saving that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> to be fair to Star Wars Theory, I would say that if someone was like, we have all these shows, what do you think has the highest budget? I'd be like, it surely should be. And if not if not Kenobi, then Kenobi should at least be near the top. I would, I, I, I disagree. I'd say it depends on what each show is and what, like, what it needs to do, right? Like, if it's going to be a Kenobi show that's going to be lower stakes and set on Tatooine, which is what it should be, then like I don't think it needs more than fifty million, if that. Um, I yeah, th I think you're underestimating the cost of like first of all, like Ewan McGregor is going to be a very highly paid actor, uh, but second, actually a lot of the cost would be because Joel Edgerton is a quite a big name now as well. Um, but putting all the, all the you know the, the actor salaries to one side, just filming on location rather than in the vol, you know, in, in the the how's it called that big circular thing, the volume, the volume, volume. yeah, you had it, yeah, yeah. The volume. you know, shooting on location rather than the volume. Uh, getting a whole cast out i mean i know they didn't actually do this for kenobi but like if you were doing it properly going back out to the actual sets in in morocco was it libya uh no it's tunisia right it's in tunisia mm -hmm. um and doing it all properly i would say that would cost you quite a lot like at least 50 to 60 70 million oh, okay well then yeah if the show's actually being ma being made in not a cheap fashion then sure actually go. being created <laughs> um, i was saying i was kind of presupposing like oh if we're just going to film all this on the volume anyway then fine because that's the thing, right? Like Andor's budget is presumably going to be the result of the fact that it barely filmed anything on the volume, if anything. It, I think like the Senate scenes were the volume, obviously, but like otherwise, it's probably it's, it. it's all like also a larger all practical sets and large scale CGI. A large part of Andor's big budget as well is because it also was filmed in the UK, and there was a lot of tax breaks put towards it as mm. well. Yeah. So filmed in the UK, it just naturally had a bigger budget because that's a, how it works. It was a much larger scale story and had twice as many episodes as Kenobi. Well, that's yeah, the other thing is with with the tax break stuff, right? Because when people point to these film budgets and go, "This is huge," and I'm like, "Okay, but depending on where it's filmed, a large amount of that budget is essentially just like tax write off. Like where? the budget, the budget isn't really going towards the film. It's it's an accounting trick so they can like avoid tax." Wait, so where was Game of Thrones season eight filmed? Uh, Ireland and uh, Dubrovnik, I think. So there would have been like tax right I mean, for that show too right there is zero tax in ireland yeah ireland is a tax haven so okay we're in ireland i wanted to highlight so neil says the volume needs to go away it looks so cheap and bad nope the volume is not the issue it's well, people who don't know how to use the volume yeah, it's literally the, overuse. the first season of mandalorian for all the issues that it has when greg fraser is the dp he makes the volume look great like literally the volume it has the uh the reputation that it has now because he made it look really good and the mandalorian was like where people first heard about it so it's like it's not the volume itself that's the the batman yeah it's like the, the batman batman, batman, batman. 
Yeah. People, yeah. people blame like CGI uh, for the prequels. It's, it's like bad CGI. It's like nope. CGI is never the issue. It's CGI the not issue being of used correctly. Or filmmakers not knowing how to use it. Crunches. If, poor budgets. If, if Greg Fraser was the DP of Kenobi, Kenobi would have looked great. It would have been <laughs> just as awful writing wise, but it would have looked fantastic. Here's well, the thing: he was one of the guys who was instrumental in the creation of the volume. He directly uh -huh. helped make it. He knows it better than right. any other DP. In the I mean, world. we have we have a direct right. comparison here because Greg Fraser worked on Mando season one, which had a very similar budget to Kenobi. It had a hundred million dollars. And that was over the course of eight episodes as compared to six. So, like, if we you were... You know what? Mando season one looks really good. Yeah. Like, it, it does. does. It looks great and had pretty much the same budget as Kenobi. Well, because, and well, it, was also like, some... it was supposed to be, like, the first live-action Star Wars movie, right? It was a Star Wars show, right? So yeah. they had a lot to prove with it. So then also, after that, it seems like they... It's kind of like Marvel, where after they they sort of proved themselves, they just sort of figured that they could just rest on their laurel, laurels and just, like print cash basically and it's like that's not how it works but also Victory I, I don't wanna, has defeated you i don't want to get around this point right because uh, regardless of how big the budgets were relative to each other 90 million dollars is a lot of money mm -hmm. for a tv show that's the like, second point as a, com as a comparison also for only for only six episodes as well so like in terms of per episode that's a lot of money that kenobi had to play with like you compare it to like westworld season one which is one of the best looking tv shows i've ever seen that had 88 million dollars for the whole season and it's got uh 10 episodes Mm -hmm. so four more than kenobi and they're longer i i apologize to neil i don't mean to like to make you feel like you're being called out or something i just i saw your comment i was like oh i i've got to address this like it's it's not the volume but it's and worth also, addressing and also uh she i don't know if you saw but shiny he mentioned did, you yeah. shiny don't do that don't don't at don't at me uh but also don't, well i mean don't do we wanna... at I'm, re I'm reading his comment now there is also the context of how much disney has lost in the show uh, with the amount of times the production has uh, ha had to start from scratch since it was kicked around for years. Um, maybe? I don't know. I mean, Andor had a very troubled production uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the beginning. Yeah. Well, and so that's the thing. It's like, we talk about uh, the $90 million budget for Kenobi, and Star Wars Theory's entire narrative in this video is like, that's chump change. You know, he they were given pennies to work with, and it's like, so... <laughs> 90 million is a pretty big budget. Um, so then we have to wonder, like, wonder where that money was put, right? What did it go to? Um, Jolly and I have talked before, I think we've mentioned this on stream, like the whole theory about how the reason these shows end up being really expensive and then looking so cheap is that they just shoot multiple versions of basically every scene and then test screen the hell out of them and then sort of, like, like push all, put all, like, uh, cobble all of it together right into this unholy matrimony of of just disjointed uh scenes right uh like it doesn't really fit together very well but like these are all the scenes that tested well with audiences and so like you just have so much unused footage uh probably even entire storylines of, of each show that just don't ever even make it into the final product that's where all this money is going to clearly yeah i think that's a, a large part of where the money is going <laughs> Because, like, no, I'm sorry, 90 million is not a small budget. He's acting like this is some kind of indie budget that, like, oh, those poor, poor <laughs> Deb and Joby and all of them over there. They well, had, hang on. They had no, that's work. a they were pretty substantial budget. It's, 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 remind me, how much money did the creator have? 80 million. Like, yeah, like, exactly. And that looks fantastic. It's like mm -hmm. Trump yep. saying that he got a small loan of a million dollars. Uh huh. Like, the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's not a small loan at all, bud. Like, you can have big budget movies shot on really small budgets i know these 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 movies from the uh, 70s and 80s shot on, they were shot on pretty pretty small budgets especially by today's uh standard they're called the original star wars trilogy small budgets what are you talking about cool. a new hope had a budget of 900 million dollars of course of course <laughs> well and again like because obviously like the by today's standards the effects don't hold up but for the day they were revolutionary like they were miles ahead like mm -hmm. lucas was a pioneer they when it comes streets to, ahead to, yeah, I mean, George Lucas, whatever his writing faults uh, and directing faults, like he is a very, very talented artist, particularly when it comes to visual effects and like designing and foreseeing the future of visual effects. And and what he managed to accomplish with the original Star Wars movies on the budget they had is nothing short of a miracle. There's a reason Neil, those movies are so well remembered. Neil brings yeah. up uh, the the creator, and it's like, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Of, actually, actually, eighty million dollar budget looks great. Mm-hmm. 
You want to know something insane? Fellowship mm. of the Ring is uh, only three million dollars more expensive than. Oh, uh, I, I, I spoke about this with Sheev. I was like, if you if you take the entire combined <laughs> budget of like the Lord of the Rings extended trilogy, and like you put it against like it's it's like one Infinity War is like, t- like a four fifths of the entire uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah, <laughs> it's Jeez. bonkers. Like mm-hmm. it's, Lord of the Rings is one of the most cost effective movies I've ever seen produced. Oh, yeah. Actually. <laughs> And uh, I mean, Fellowship of the Ring came out in two thousand one, and you look at the, oh, it still holds the, up. At the Balrog, and you're like, shit. Yeah, there's yeah. like a couple of wonky moments, like if you're really paying attention to his feet, but like otherwise, it really <laughs> like it holds up really well. Balrog oh, feet does. picks. Yeah, I, I'm. <laughs> See, I have, I have I'm, a I'm the Quentin Tarantino feet, so. of the Balrog world. Um, well, yeah, no, there's lots of things that are cheaper and more expensive, or slightly more expensive than uh, Kenobi that look infinitely better. It's just it was a sloppy production. They didn't know what they're doing. I would say, like, if I were to nitpick the visuals of Lord of the Rings, like, there's a lot of examples of, like, pretty dated green screen. Um, but, like, the same with Kenobi, and that came out last year. So even Even then, I think Lord of the Rings is a lot more aesthetically like pleasing to look at than the Kenobi. Oh, well, absolutely. Like, this little thing called style. Well, yeah, this is the thing is that like a lot of older media is going to have at least some excuse for having dated effects. These days you don't have that same excuse. Yeah, that is it's also the other thing. Like Lord of the Rings did the best it could with what it had with like you could not have done better with the CGI yeah. technology that was available at of the it, day. it invented I that like that. the mocap anthology, didn't it? Uh, well, yeah, Andy Serkis pioneered the mocap stuff for for Colin. Which, by the way, man, Andy Serkis needs an Oscar. Someone give him that. Someone give that. Does he also... not have an Oscar? No, he's never even been nominated. What? I I, like uh, how? This, you know, Lloyd's been off show just to get this, an Oscar. This logic, by the way, I, I would also simply say applies to the way that Jar Jar Binks looks in the Phantom Menace when it's like that's the first motion yeah, capture. Yeah, dated now, but character. revolutionary for its time. Exactly. Yeah. It, you know the all the issues with that character aside is like well, yeah mean, it's it it's still that it's reminds impressive. me that reminds me of the first toy story movie i mean it's the first yes. cgi uh animated film right have have you think seen, so, yeah. doesn't really have look you, good but like you know have you seen well you take that back <laughs> here's the thing though is the humans in that movie are a massive improvement over the humans in the pixar shorts that were made before that movie have you seen mm-hmm. tin toy yeah. Yes. The fucking baby. <laughs> the baby. To be fair, they did hell. They did find a. They did find a way to recycle that baby. They just put it in the Breaking Dawn movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, before we move on, I guess the other point to make here is like Southpaw was kind of touching on this earlier. The problem with Kenobi isn't the budget. Um. So like th- this whole this whole argument's moot anyway. Well, and, and Theory kind of even does touch on this, too. He's like, no, the, the real problems are the writing, this, this, and this. And it's like, cool, so why are you even bringing up the budget? Right. I mean, that's the, a bigger issue, too, in Hollywood is, I mean, we all know this is, uh, especially just recently with the uh, labor strikes and stuff in uh, Hollywood. Um, obviously, you need to uh, properly compensate the people that are working under you and all that, you know? So, uh, I, I do yeah, wonder how much of that out there. Because I completely agree with you, see. I, I wonder how much of this, because, again, to answer your question, Chief, and you're like, why even bring up the budget if you're going to then blame the writing? It's like, because I think these people don't see the difference. I think uh, this is even a joke that I think got made on EFAB, right? That EFAB weirdly pointed out, where someone was like, oh, more, but why, why don't they spend, oh, that's it, it was cinematic venom and more money mm. on the script. Mm. It's like, that's not, that's, <laughs> that's not how script writing works. It's not like more money equals they think, better. Yeah, writing. there are people out there who think you can just throw money at whatever uh, in the process, and it'll, it'll somehow make it better. mentality. And it, it, it like I I don't remember who made this example, but like I remember people were talking about uh, like VFX. This this might have also been EFAT, but they were like, yeah, um, VFX can only be so good if they're given like a, a limited amount of time. You could have the best VFX artist in the world brought in, but you only give them an hour to make the movie. It's not going to yeah. look good. It doesn't matter and how yet, much money you pay them. And yeah, uh, EFAP are at the forefront of blaming the, the, the strikers for the movies being bad, which I'm like, I don't understand that. I don't understand right, how actually, you can go like, hmm? well, what? a lot of that community, right? Like, Nerd Rotic was extremely anti strike, and, so um, yeah. and so was Paz, and so was like a lot but, of that community well, are like vehemently anti strikers. I feel like, I feel like the EFAP that's, members that's specifically like, are probably pro strike. 
They strike me as more I, of the pro strike in, type. In fairness, I, I don't know if I have that much faith in them, uh, but sure. In fairness, I wouldn't say that Neurotic is EFAP so much as he is EFAP adjacent. Now, uh, that said, Alex says, fun fact in Toy Story, all human childs are exact copies of, of main kid. You see, 200,000 units were available with a million more well on the way. Well, it's just like, you know, the, the Fallout 4 character creator where they model like the, your dad in the game off of what you choose. But it's always <laughs> yeah. like, it just looks like a slightly uncanny valley version of what's already quite an uncanny valley looking character. It's that's 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 basically what it is. Isn't Star Wars theories also a bigot that is part of the alt right? I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I have, I have no idea what his not, political views are. I, I don't, I'm not sure if I could call him a bigot, but I know he's fucking comfortable with hanging out with bigots. He's hey, yeah. He's literally. He's oh my there. god. He yesterday. Yeah, he wants to go for the night times. I sent this huh. in the chat. Uh, he was doing a stream again, one with Mahler on oh. it, where he was saying he wanted to form an Avengers circle, like round table sort of thing with him, uh, Mahler, everyone over at Friday Night Tides, Geeks and Gamers uh, and all that. It's Ryan like, Kettle, yeah. It's like, buddy. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, buddy. no, not a good look, dude. Not a good look. Criticisms. <laughs> Those are the guys you want to get. You want to uh, grow the, the your Star Wars channel? You want to be more successful? Maybe the best thing you should do is not associate yourself with probably the biggest scum fucks in the entire field what? of media discussion on Again. YouTube. To be fair, to I mean not to Star Wars, sorry, but like say say you know you were a Star Wars YouTuber with millions of viewers, and you were looking to be like, I want to have a, a roundtable discussion where all the different sort of viewpoints in this fandom are represented by their most eloquent spokespersons. I can see an argument, a definite argument for inviting Mauler. I think sure. he is Mauler, the, the yes. most the most sure. eloquent spokesperson for a certain kind of. Uh, oh, let's. Look, I don't like calling him objective because I don't think he actually is, but ob He's objective not. style fan. Um. However, what the hell Nerd Rotic and Ryan Kittle and Friday Night Tights and stuff have to contribute to that discussion, I don't understand. Well, and it's also think... like, if we were going to do that, we'd want to have a balance, right? We wouldn't just want to have Mahler and Friday Night Tights and uh, fucking Geeks and Gamers and Ryan Kittle. We'd probably want to get, like, Mahler in there, probably... Jenny, like, like Jenny Nicholson, maybe? Jenny Nicholson, yeah. It's <laughs> like, but I wouldn't want to have... Like, that seems like a nightmare blunt rotation. Um, yeah. Like if you go where to get like yeah. Mahler, Jane Nicholson, like Brown Table, maybe uh, Cosmonaut. <laughs> Yo, I, so. oh. I, I really don't know how how to feel about this comment from Oaktails. Nerdrotic is an EFAP, same way Southpaw is an EFAP. They are both adjacent and great guys. Mm. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, look, look. Like, let's, I, I don't want us to go into the habit of like picking on chat, so I'm not going to do that. What yeah, I will let's... just say is, uh, person person who likes Nerdrotic, um, I would just very softly advise you to maybe take a closer look at what it is you admire about the man, what he actually says, the the reason he says those things, and then maybe, you know, not to quote the Star Wars, but maybe go home and rethink your life just <laughs> a little bit. Well, it's his integrity, obviously. I, I, well, it's, I, yeah, I, it's I, his I integrity appreciate... that we value. I appreciate the compliment. I, I will. I will. I'll let Jolly say that. I, I, I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. And again, I genuinely, I mean it with love. I don't mean that as a put down. I just mean that yes. as like, I'm glad I mean you like with engaging content. with YouTube. <laughs> I am glad that people enjoy engaging with media and media critics. I just, I would always advise people to just be more engaged critically with who they're listening to and not just listen to the surface level elements of what they're saying that you might nod along with if you weren't really thinking about it. Didn't Muller even say in one of his older videos that like there should never be a YouTuber that you fully one hundred percent agree with? Yeah, he did. Yeah, correct. I missed that I, Muller. That's actually where, my where has he gone? Oh, right. Back to back to this wonderful masterpiece of a video. She Hulk yeah. gets a better budget than Obi Wan. <laughs> Freaking uh, She Hulk. <laughs> I mean, what the hell, man? Like, I like how he who acts is me? It's so bizarre because like. She, the people who made She-Hulk are in no way affiliated with yeah, Lucasfilm. Completely in terms different of like studios, production. different treasury, yeah. different financier. But also, even if it was one guy sitting at a table, right, making all these decisions for every Disney Plus show and like what, what, what budgets go where, obviously She-Hulk is going to get the bigger budget than Kenobi, right? It's a, uh -huh. the main character is a fucking CGI big ass green woman. Yeah, yeah. There's... I mean, hell, She Hulk even made that joke, right? Of like, can you please transform back to human form because you're taking up too much budget? Mm -hmm. Yeah, wait till yeah. we cut away. 
The show is crap. Yeah. Before anyone tries to straw man us in the chat, the show is fucking. Oh, yeah. I, it's I hate She Hulk. I, I hate Kenobi, but She Hulk is considerably worse. It is yeah. terrible. Mm -hmm. But that being said, it makes sense that the show has a higher budget. It just, it's well, just logical. <laughs> This is the thing. I really hope that people understand that, like us simply saying it makes sense that it has more money, is not the same thing as us saying, "Well, it's better." Because budget, well, and people the stupidity of Star Wars theory fans. Well, it's, yeah, it's we, also yeah. not the same thing as saying that, like, we think it should have had a larger budget. Like, if I'm the financier at Marvel, like, like for, let's say for whatever reason the Star Wars budget and the Marvel budget are from the same treasury, and I'm the guy organizing that, and I have someone coming up to me and going, like, "Okay, you can either have She-Hulk or you can have Kenobi," being like well-funded and i'm like well what would it cost to have a well-funded she-hulk show and they're like 200 million dollars and I'm like, and what am i getting out of that and like well she does a, a weird dance and 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 <laughs> yeah. kevin feige turns up as a robot to admit that everything is crap about the way we make movies I'm like, yeah, i'd be like you know what maybe that's not worth a 200 million dollar investment maybe, maybe let's we should just not make the show other at, projects. All, at all yeah maybe yeah. let's just not make this maybe it's a bad idea i uh, there's a couple of like meta jokes that i liked about she-hulk and that's about it I liked I liked when when uh, Bruce literally says I was a different person back then when talking about his scuffle with uh, uh, abomination. abomination. I that, guess that, that, that. I, I thought uh, that was funny. I thought uh, that was funny. It, it got a, it got a wry pain smile out of me. <laughs> I, I thought it was funny. That's 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 basically all I have to say in praise of She Hulk though. Comedy that's basically is it. subjective, Murray. Isn't that what you always say? <laughs> anyway, She-Hulk. Making yeah. these decisions up there. I'm sorry to make anyway, this kind of there. video, dude, but honestly, like, who is making those decisions up not. there? You wonder why Star Wars is in such a state where no one is interested anymore. Nobody gives a crap. It's because of okay, shit like stop. this. So, I... <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I don't get <laughs> <laughs> I need a translator. There's Holy two shit. things here. The first, the first thing is, if you're going to bring up Disney's stock, you know, their share price, when we're talking about Star Wars, or indeed any of their shows, you're being massively disingenuous. Because, like, that is a, a highly manipulative uh, argument. By the way, that is not me saying that these things have had no impact on their share price. But the main reason for anyone who's actually interested in financial crap, that Disney massively, like, that, that, that their shares went down last year, was that they lost the rights to broadcast the cricket in India. Which is a huge market I, and a huge thing. Uh, okay, so all the hype that I was given about this video from everything I heard from Sheev and C and Andrew, I wasn't prepared for him literally be like, "You want to know the reason why people aren't excited for Star Wars anymore? It's because Obi Wan doesn't have the same budget as She Hulk." That's literally <laughs> the crux of this video. This is That's the, yeah, this is the amazing. <laughs> That's I way just... funnier. That what? honestly. <laughs> Like no 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 I have to I look, we were we we've, we've been prepping this for what two weeks now a week like a week yeah it, it, it feels like it's been two weeks the point is uh all my speculation for what this was going to be I just thought this was just going to be a bunch of like insane spurging about uh, uh, <coughs> Andor and Andor fans being so oh obnoxious. he gets there I wasn't he gets I wasn't there. I wasn't prepared for this though. No, I was ready. I was ready for the Andor uh, nonsense. I was ready made. for this. If I may just finish uh, my, my point as well, which is like, if you look at any large, like, because Disney is a huge corporation, like, they're gigantic, and, like, they have their fingers in many pies, and many other large corporations and, and uh, investing groups have their fingers in Disney's pie. If you, th therefore, if you look at the, uh, a company like Disney, and you see their share price plummet, and you go, oh, it's just because Kenobi underperformed, like, no, it's Kenobi not is not, it's not nearly big, yeah, Kenobi is not nearly big enough to put a dent in Disney, even if it completely failed. Mm -hmm. right? no. it's, a, it's, it's, it's the accumulation of all the stuff they're doing and also factors like the cricket in india and other investment groups and like their political battle with ron DeSantis and all sorts of other things like the culture wars there's a lot of reasons their share price dipped and also because we just came out of a, a bloody you know lockdown and, a, and a, a, an almost recession and people and a huge amount of inflation and people just have less money to spend on entertainment there's Even also the fight that. with Ron DeSantis is actually not that big in terms of Disney's uh, corporate interest. The fight is basically over just self-governorship in uh, in Florida, but mostly in, in regards to uh, maintaining roads and you know electrical systems and stuff and sewage treatment. Like it's really not as big as people like to make it yeah. out to be. It's basically Disney, just so Disney, Disney isn't that. a tax burden on everyone. Yeah, no, they're definitely winning this. Um, it's, it's a First Amendment case, but 
the thing is, is that fight's not that big. And the thing is with Disney is the biggest parts of the company, and I was discussing this the other day because of the uh, the earnings call, um, just because, you know, I want to keep in the loop. I'm a shareholder for Disney. Um, the biggest parts of the company are ESPN and theme parks. Movies and shows are tiny in comparison to everything else at Disney. They're a really small part of the pie. Uh, they do contribute a lot, obviously, just because the popularity of shit like Star Wars and Marvel and their animated films is absolutely going to prop up their film or their their theme parks because people are going to want to go to the parks and they're going to want to meet like Darth Vader and stuff when they're at Disneyland and all that. Um, but overall, no, <laughs> the movies and shows being bad will take down stock prices quite a bit, but it's not going to destroy Disney. And then furthermore, one show on one of their streaming platforms doing poorly is not going to fucking nuke them from orbit. It does uh, nothing. I, I just want, by the way, uh, Sheev, you've gotten two super I, chats. I have, yeah, I'm waiting. Go ahead and finish right, your let's, thought. Let's, let's, let's do that. No, right. I, I, I just finished my thought. You could, Go ahead. Okay. That's why, I, yeah. So I got one from Wisdom Minari for $10. Thank you for the super chat. He says, I was watching your Dark Thor video, Sheev. This is a treat. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, I liked our Dark Thor video. One of our best That's streams, fun. I think. That was great. I uh, loved uh, Dark Thor's video on your Ahsoka video. I thought that was excellent. That was excellent. A video for sure. Yeah. Well, well, well written, concisely argued. You I know, feel very, very direct. Should we, should we treat these guys to the Skyfall video being covered? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think so. May, I mean, maybe you know what? Throw it in the playlist, and if we, if we feel like it after this video is done, we'll watch it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I finally <laughs> caught up to that lore. That was go go well for funny. it, see. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that, chat, we'll super chat too. the second uh, super chat from Bagel for 199. She've never cared for Star Wars theory, innocent or otherwise. <laughs> yes, yeah. I've made. I've, I like it how I've made this successfully now a meme of your fan base. Fuck, no, Charlie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you see what you've unleashed? Well, to be honest, Sheev, I never really cared for you, innocent or otherwise. <laughs> 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 You wonder why people... <clears throat> oh, fuck. I need more water. <laughs> I, uh, I, do not, I do not wonder why people fuck. No, I, I know exactly why they fuck. <laughs> you wonder why people hate Sheev Talk streams. It's because of shit like this. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? The budget wasn't even the biggest problem of the show. Correct. You have uh -huh. fan films... You have fan fictions that have like no budget, that have like like the budget of an internet connection and a computer that honestly garner more attention and love than the garbage writing and directing more that attention. flew into the Kenobi show. You have the most. So I've just I'm just confused by like the point of it. I know that this was a like a disparate rambling of a madman, right? Um, mm -hmm. And like he didn't script this or anything like that. But like at the same time. Why are you making such a big stink about the budget if you recognize that the problem with Kenobi was that the writing was poor? Because I think he thinks they're linked. I mean, I, I, again, oh, obviously yeah. not to like a one-to-one -one ratio because he does admit that like, you can have good writing without budget. But I do think that there is an element here of being like, oh, why didn't they spend the money on these shows to make sure the writing was pitch perfect? And I'm like, because that's not how it works. And again, even if he's not arguing that and he is just rambling together like incoherent thoughts that are just babbling, that's not a better, that's not a better look yeah it's just it's just a weird video I, I i'm getting really tired of like trying to uh respond to videos and like i can't even tell what the point of it is because like the thing i sent to this chat yesterday um that one video i can't remember who by but like he was comparing arcane to uh ahsoka and like vi and yeah. and sabine and stuff and it's like and, like, I couldn't tell if the point of the video was to break down the individual fight scenes and, like, talk about why the arcane fight scene is superior. Or, if like, if the point of the video was supposed to be about why, like, Vi as a character is superior to Sabine as a character. Because it seemed to be kind of arguing both at the same time. But, it, like, they, neither of them intertwined with each other. They were both just kind of things he was saying. It was a weird video. Yes, it was very weird. Anyway, <laughs> he looks so angry. <laughs> <laughs> Should we all change our PFPs to just well, not, <laughs> random I screen want to be a <laughs> just, He doesn't look angry. He looks I'm like in mind the same, but he looks like you know how a bad Halloween movie when someone looks up and sees Michael. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This is like what's up? six times. What's what's on screen for me? This is, 
No, no, this is this is Star Wars Theory's Tucker Carlson impression. <laughs> 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 I'm going to I'm going to not change my uh profile to uh to Star Wars theory but no. you guys can you I, guys I are am, welcome to I am too. definitely not doing that. I'm not changing but. mine. Important characters in Star Wars. Not only that, you're bringing back Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor. Forget Jimmy Smith, everybody else. Jimmy Smith. You're bringing back the goats, okay? The the original Basil Oregano. <laughs> oh, the prequel trilogy. That was the original. Yeah. The original the OGs, man. The OGs from the prequels, okay? Okay. And you, the you not only, you know, give a crap script, you get people that don't know what the hell they're doing when it comes to writing the stories and the characters mm -hmm. that George built and created. Mm -hmm. You regress them. Which is arguably redundant, by the way, when you mention the crap scripts. I mean, I'm being I'm being a little a little bit of a pedantic asshole. Well, I mean, there, you could have you could have a crap script, but like still be uh, you could still honor the characters like, you know, a, a weak plot, but good characterization. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yes. I will say that just this little section, I'm in agreement with him, but I'm only in agreement because what he's saying is like the blindingly obvious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. Where like, yeah, you're you're correct, but like, so what? Like, this not impressive. You know it's what? Like really right, but with what you're right with is, you know, so obvious that if you weren't right, I would be. I guess. Seriously. You, know what, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that meme of I've said this to Sheev before, where like you're talking to someone like very very conservative, or like just not even conservative, just like someone who's lost in conspiracy theories. And they're like, oh man, you know, I feel like my life is being controlled by forces beyond my comprehension. Like an, an elite group of people with loads of money who are just trying to ruin it for everybody else. And I'm like, yes. Ancient aliens? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're like, it's the Jews. And I'm like, no, you no. are so close. <laughs> <laughs> I was so gonna, close. I was just going to say like, yeah, I mean, it, this is basically like getting the answer right while like, you know, the, the, the equation you use to get to the right answer is bullshit. <laughs> But like, People like Star Wars theory are the reason I tell my students to show they're working. Exactly, because because I look at this and I'm like, okay, he's saying he's admitting Kenobi shit, but he thinks that Ahsoka was good up until episode seven. He thinks Mando <laughs> season one and two were good. So like, what's like, what does he mean by good? What does he mean by bad? What does he mean when he says words? What does he mean when he says that like you know, uh, it regressed the characters in Kenobi? It's like did. Did Ahsoka not regress the characters? I'd say it did. Literally all he cares about is just member berries, so that's that's what he's looking for. That's why I'm always confused by like videos like this. And like and like I get arguments like this too. Uh, uh, like on Twitter all the time. Where uh, uh what was that one comment I was telling you guys about was like, yeah, I I thought Book of Boba Fett was really good, and even I think that Mando season three is shit. It's like But they're both bad for like the same. the same reasons. So yeah. why? This I is why, this it's is like why when, you show your work. Inconsistent standards. It's like when people tell me that they, they you know, they really like, uh, you know, they, they don't like Ahsoka, but they like the character. And I'm like, but if you like the character, you shouldn't like the show. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Sorry, I misworded that because I said don't like. People who like the show being like, oh, I like it because I like Sabine, or I like it because I like Ahsoka, or I like Kenobi because I like Obi-Wan. I'm like, but if you like these characters... This show should make you incredibly angry. Well, and then we talk about, and again, this is going to come off as super mean and condescending or whatever. This is not how we mean it, but like, you know, there, there's there's obviously going to be like the shallow, uh, the, like the surface level reasons that people like these characters. Like, I like Darth Vader because he looks cool and he he like has a he's like all black and shit and he's got like a cool red lightsaber. Uh, he's well, got the cape. I mean, that's why aesthetic. Star Wars really likes him. Yeah, and he he kicks ass and he takes no names and it's like okay, cool. I like him because of the character. Um, I, well, I, I like the tragedy of Anakin. and like. I mean, a really exaggerated way that we could do this, right, is if I'm, if I'm like talking to Jolly, I'm like, hey, Jolly, you know, I, I know that you really don't like The Last of Us Part Two, but I really like that game. And then I'm like, I, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm playing the cutscene where Joel's just getting brutally murdered. I'm like, yeah, I, I really like it because I really like Joel. I, I really like how Joel is. <laughs> yeah, I really like Joel's character. I just but, like seeing meanwhile, Joel. Like, he's having, he's having, he's having a fucking golf club. <laughs> driven What's wrong with this like, I don't understand. I just, I just love Gave Joel. Him an art. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the, that was the funny thing, right? Because when The Last of Us came out, People like that was one of my. Change. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of my criticisms, right? Was I was like, this is this show is clearly the product of a of a, a writer who was trying to rewrite aspects of the character to better suit the sequel he made the original yeah um, and the result was like some fairly confused characterization for people like joel and ellie depending on what scene they were in but then people were like oh but like i just like seeing ellie and i'm like but 
she's nothing like how she was in the, the in the original story. Yeah, I like seeing Ellie too. I like original Ellie. I don't like this new version that they're doing. It, it, I like I like I like great. the actress. She's, she's not great. very. I just know. wish. I, I, I do I oh, do like God. the actress. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! I felt like a stake in my own heart. Uh, That's one I of know, my most. I, I think... now I now know what she, what she feels like when you quote that <laughs> Jamie Lannister line. It's my. Uh... <laughs> Here's my whole thing. I think I think that scene is more it more like personally irritating to me than anything Ahsoka did, and that's mm. quite a high bar. I mean, it's it's more irritating for me because I just don't give a shit about Rebels compared to The Last of Us. Uh, yeah. Um, also, uh, I, I want to highlight Neil uh, in chat saying it's why South Plus critiques of Batman animated series I liked. I still enjoy the series, but I can't hold it in high regard as I once said. Yeah, I guess they must have seen my stream where I went over Heart of Ice, uh, and we're we're gonna go through that show together, right, Steve and Jolly? Uh, we'll we'll, we'll get you to finally there. elaborate a lot more in on like that. Two years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tr trust me, we. I've got reasons. I've got reasons for this hot take. It's it's not just a contrarian take, folks. He's just a contrarian. <laughs> uh, I don't know who all here has seen the Last of Us show. I know South Pond and Jolly have. I am not. Do you guys remember when the kid was infected and she thought she could just like <laughs> rub her blood <laughs> on his body <laughs> and that that would save him from being infected? Re yeah, remember, I do remember that. Re remember, <laughs> remember when uh, when when Joel gets surprise attacked by a random goon of David's who sneaks up on him, like when he's like, "There's no cover." He's just able to like just just materialize from thin air to attack Joel and then try to attack him with a baseball bat. Yeah. That was great. It's a good show. It's totally a great show. Yeah. I, I love it how it's... I love it how the guard that intercepted them just so happened to be the one guard that Joel knew. That my... was uh that was I, I, wonderful I, and not at all contrived. I think my favorite thing about the show, and I, I put this above uh the game's interpretation easily, is how it really takes a hard stance on whether or not what Joel did at the end of the show was uh, uh was good <laughs> or bad. <sighs> Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that, moral that ambiguity that, is shit. So I, I like thing, I like that we really committed to a choice. The, the the thing that you get you get a very balanced and not at all insane reaction on social media when you point this out. Um, yeah, that was that was fantastic. Anyway, and, we are we are moving away we from are, the point. Yeah. I think. And, and I feel like C and it. Andrew are just very confused well, right now. We could well. We, I, I've seen the end. No, I'm mindlessly no scrolling through Twitter. Right Restrain right. yourself. We must get back to the video. <laughs> the the points would be not well, though. Circling Stop, back to Stop. what you were saying about Ahsoka. Circling back to what you were saying about Ahsoka, the point of someone being like, well, I like the show because I really like the character of Ahsoka. It, it's just, it's absurd. It's I like, but I like they're her, on the I like screen. I like to see. I like Sheep Talk streams because I like the character of Southpaw. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, like, that makes I like one Ahsoka. of you. I like Ahsoka because of my character. I'm like, I do too. I just wish she'd been in the show. Yeah. Like... I would like oh, to have man. this stream go quickly. Ideally, we're three um, and a half. You focus on Riva. You make chasing Leia literally like the most impossible thing to find a nine-year-old or ten-year-old. And above so all, you have open-handed combat from a civilian against stormtroopers. I mean, look, stormtroopers suck, but they're not. They don't get. They don't get. Well, Tala's not. Yeah, I'm uh, So he's uh, he's referencing civilian. Tala beating up the stormtroopers here. She's not a civilian. I was trying but to think if like, he was, like one. <laughs> if he was referring to a different character or like a different moment, but I can't think of a single time in Kenobi where I'm willing to talk about a slip of the tongue because I agree with him that yeah. that was absolute nonsense. It's, it's oh, it dumb. was. It's dumb. Yeah, he's it's, making I, he's making good points so far, and again because it's like yeah, these are the obvious things. I'm um, just being pedantic. That's yeah, all. You I want to just throw this in too. Um, he said stormtroopers suck, which for somebody who apparently understands Star Wars better than anyone else, um, yeah. I think it's pretty. Stupid that he says stormtroopers suck when they're not supposed to. It's again, actually. it's like people are looking at Return of the Jedi as if it's the rule and not the exception. Like, right. Sorry. The first two mm -hmm. films establish very clearly that stormtroopers are a formidable force, and the expanded universe and lots of other Star Wars content have shown they are basically fucking SEAL Team Six. Yeah, and all backs us up. The, the stormtroopers yeah. get sent in. They're like they're not the police. They they get sent in as like the last resort. They are the crack troops. Right. And you know what? Uh, I'll say this about Rebels that I appreciate, even though uh, Rebels does do this a lot where it like makes the stormtroopers kind of a joke um it also shows that they have a very rigorous training process um only the best of the best make it through the academy <sighs> and like and like the yeah. best of the best were people that were like acrobatically competing with with ezra an actual like force sensitive so yeah mm -hmm. anyway 
get disoriented like that from, you know, a slap on the head, okay? But then you also managed to give literally the worst script of all time, the lowest budget of all time. The worst <laughs> script of all time and the lowest, lowest budget, budget of all time, everyone. Yeah. The lowest, oh, yeah. lowest budget of all time. That measly $90 million. million dollars. Dollars. $90 million? Bitch, if I got $90 million <laughs> to make a film, you could bet your ass I'm going to go fucking nuts with it. That's huge. Well, Imagine a hundred million dollars being the lowest budget of all time. Fuck, <laughs> that's an expensive industry. I mean, it is, but goddamn. Yeah. Or inflation is just really out of whack. I mean, this is Joe Biden's America. Yeah. What was the budget for the first Halloween again? We looked this up recently because we were looking at like thirty thousand. Yeah, shoestring. Yeah, three hundred fifty thousand, three hundred twenty-five, yeah. somewhere around there. Yeah, not a lot. You know, and that movie is way better looking than Kenobi, and it came out 40-something years ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's, I, I don't get it. I, I don't... I'm trying... as Like, I'm trying to understand this. I'm really trying to... Who's, make, who's making these decisions, dude? Let's give this script yeah. the crappiest script of all time. Let's regress the characters, and then let's give them the lowest budget. Of, our, of the most important story in the Star Wars, budget. the most important characters in Star Wars, but <laughs> let's just literally give them the bare minimum, but focus all of bare our attention minimum. in Andor, which, yes, Andor is a great show. Got it! Boys, <laughs> bingo card! <laughs> how, how many have oh, you checked is, off so far? Only one. Okay. I haven't this got any the, other ones. This is, this is the clip I've seen, right? And the thing I find funny about this before he gets into this, like, oh, French eating, you know, French cheese eating people <laughs> comments. Which, fuck you, it's great to be French, and it's great to eat cheese. Cheese is delicious, great. fuck you. It's yeah. not great to be um, French. The French and are seen Reddit's and red wine And red wine is delicious. He's a French um, rat, and he eats cheese. Yeah, and he's great. But, but all that aside, I like it how he's like, oh, I definitely like Andor. Don't don't try and tell me that I don't like Andor. If you're saying I don't like Andor, you're being disingenuous on Twitter. But he also is like, oh, if you like Andor, it's like, oh yeah, that really gives me the impression that you like the show. Andor, so um, yeah, it's his his relationship with Andor is clearly like he doesn't like it, but he knows he doesn't have any actual valid reasons not to like it other than that it's boring, and he's been given a lot of shit for calling it boring and like and you know using that as like a reason for why it's bad. So he he keeps having to default to no, it's good, I like it, it's good. Uh, I just it's just not my thing. It's like okay. So why are you why are you calling it Anne Bore? Why are you calling its fan base pretentious? Why like you clearly don't like, like this show. You can just admit you don't like the show. You've already admitted that the best mm -hmm. of the best are the things that Dave Filoni and John Favreau made. So we already know you don't have taste. You don't have like to say you like Andor. We're fine with that. I feel like if your goal is to avoid getting like catching flack, I think this is the worst, worst possible, possible way to do that. It's a yeah. bad because... yeah. Because, like, okay, so there's regular guys like you or me who you hear someone say, oh, I thought that Andor was kind of boring. And it's like, oh, okay, that's that's whatever. It's not a big deal. It's punishable we, by death. We don't, yeah. we, don't, we, don't, we don't actually get mad because you don't like a TV show. It's fine, you know? But then, but then to do what <laughs> he's doing now is like, really? It sounds to me like you kind of don't like Andor and you're just pretending that you like Andor because you I, don't I, want yeah, backlash. That's exactly that's what the thing is. I do. That's the thing I agree with, right? Because this is what's clearly happened. Chief, you were right about this as well. Is that he doesn't like it. He can't eloquently describe. Like, I don't think he has the metacognitive skill to be able to articulate why he doesn't like it or understand why he doesn't like it. He just knows that he doesn't. It's a feeling he has. But then the fan group, the fan base, are like, "But it's good. Why? Why don't you think it's good?" And because, like, to publicly bash them without argumentation is to invite a severe lack, you know, a severe drop in your super chat your income. <laughs> Uh, he basically tries to thread the line of being like, oh, it's boring, but also it's good. And I'm like, there is a much simpler explanation for this. Right? And, and we talked about the sheep of like, I, I think it was with reference to the, you know, the bricks and screws comment where it's like, oh, it's just, it's just got bricks and screws. It doesn't feel like Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And we were going like, well, well, what could that possibly mean? Like, how do you articulate that in a way that kind of is defensible? And what we came to as a conclusion was basically like, if you say what I liked about original Star Wars, what I liked about George Lucas Star Wars was the the high fantasy... Uh, we are live, officially, again. I'm gonna fly yes. some planes no. into a couple uh, of no. no. What did I'm we Obama. talk about? Run to Obama, we, we just I'm discussed your fucking this. uncle. We just discussed this. Well, thank God it's gonna get cut out in the edit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey, this um, before, is a joke that was cool, you know? So like, before, 
before before we were rudely interrupted by Sheev's internet being sabotaged by Star Wars theory with an axe. Um, <laughs> I was I was explaining why I think like you know his where his anger with Andor stems from and why like his inability to articulate his emotional feelings and his thoughts around it leads to this kind of like weird and quite irritating balancing act that he does between like obviously disliking the show but being unable to say so for fear of losing out on like super chat revenue from a fan base that clearly does. Mm. So. What I was saying was, for most people, when when you watch Star Wars and and, and the, you have that kind of mentality of like, oh, I don't like Andor. It's all bricks and and screws, and it just you know it doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't feel like Star Wars. Because as, as a sentence on its own, I deplore because it doesn't tell me anything. But there is, I think, a way to defend it, which is the when you go to the, the position of with the original trilogy, with the George Lucas Star Wars, with the like original uh, material that he put out. Star Wars was clearly a high fantasy. It had that, that kind of shiny veneer of fairy tale storytelling and slightly larger than life storytelling that made it appealing on a quite, not childish, but like childlike, easy to access kind of fashion. And just like the idea of it being a kind of modern mythology. And that's very different in terms of how it feels as a genre from a much more gritty, realistic, spy esque, war story type thing like Andor. So I can fully understand why you might watch Andor and be like, yeah, you know, I, I appreciate mechanically this is a brilliant show, but it just doesn't appeal to me. This is not my flavor of show. This is not what I. This is not the comfort food Star Wars that I want when I watch Star Wars. In much the same way that if someone is going to an ice cream parlor with me, and I go, "Do you want chocolate or strawberry?" and they're like, "Well, I appreciate strawberry, but it's just not to my flavor. I'd rather just stick with the chocolate." For me, chocolate ice cream is real ice cream. I'd be like, "Okay, sure." I might object to the use of the word "real" there, but yeah, I get the sentiments. But. Star Wars theory doesn't seem to be able to do that, or at least to voice that sentiment adequately, even within his own mind. And so his response is rather than to like admit that it is a subjective perspective, just to get angry, right? He just gets angry, like it's boring, it's boring. I don't like it. Oh, but it's actually good because you guys say it's good. Just leave me alone. Mm -hmm. And I find that perspective like not just annoying, but cowardly. It is cowardly. Well, and that's the thing is like it's. I already believe this about him, but, like, when he had his conversation with Mahler, and when Mahler was laying out all the reasons why, like, Luke and Mando Season 2 is dumb, why Ahsoka's bad, this, this, or this, he just immediately just, like, was like, yep, yep, I agree, I agree, I agree. And it's like, huh. So he really didn't... I, I kind of... So, because whenever he put out the forum, right, like, anyone is welcome to jump in on the stream, I thought if I was invited onto the stream and I was having to argue with Theory, I, it was going to be like talking to... <laughs> a brick wall like he'd be so pig-headed and he would like refuse to like listen to reason and we just wouldn't get anywhere but apparently all i'd have to do is like argue my point and he'd just be like yeah that's fair oh yeah but then he's you'd no log spine. off the stream. then you'd log off the stream and immediately on his next stream he'd be like oh yeah no it's just boring and crap i've never heard a good yeah. argument for it but the stream like... would exist and i would have it saved and i'd be like haha you, I, you can't you, pretend you didn't you say these cares? things do you think his fans care Nope. No, his fans are but fucking I have delusional. It. Holy shit! I would shit. have it on record. That's all I need. The no, reality you, is that you which, could, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. You could show a recording of Theory admitting to murder, and his fans would be like, "No, he never committed murder. When did he ever say that?" He was the best guy around. <laughs> what about all the people he murdered? What murder? What murder? What murder? <laughs> No, that's that's the truth though. Like I have in my in my original Star Wars theory video, uh, you, I showed irrefutable proof of him being a liar. Like from his own mouth, contradictions that he was saying on no. his channel, public information. No, and people still said, "Oh, you you're a liar. Oh, you you're a bully." Well, oh, no, no, people, come on. no, I don't believe no. you. He comes across so honest to me. People right. people wouldn't be that irrational with their favorite YouTubers. There's no way not showing chat on. Come on. I have the, the the window for chat, but it's not showing chat in the, okay. in the stream. You have to link oh, to, is it to link the new chat. The, the source. You have to link yeah, you, you have to go to the to the source in Streamlabs and you have to like add the link to the Oh now it's chat. there. Now it's there, okay. I don't know why well, whatever. <laughs> I think it's good. So, now. Star Wars is lurking in your basement, like flicking fuse boxes on and off. That's clearly what's happening. He's no Sorato in SpongeBob. I love, by the way, that, like, Jolly mentioned Star Wars here going after Sheev's Wi-Fi with an axe like he's the internet lumberjack, like Bob Chandler. I love I'm that. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. <laughs> Hopefully that's good now. I'm gonna kind of just let... Can people, like, talk in chat real quick just so I can see if it goes, like... I don't, I don't have chat open. Someone else do it. Goes up. I'll do it. 
while, while C is doing that, I'd like to point out that where Star Wars Theory's hand is frozen against the backdrop of the Ewok is so disturbing that I'm not quite sure what to do with that. <laughs> what, what, what are you doing to that Ewok there, Star Wars okay, Theory? Okay, it is moving. Good, 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 good. That was going to really, really annoy me. Oh, I'm glad we... Anyway, let's continue this this wonderful <laughs> stream now. All right, let's carry on. Are we ready? Yep. Awesome. Literally give them the bare minimum, but focus all of our attention in Andor. Andor. Which, yes, Andor is a great show for everyone who attended film school and wants to eat their cheese with a French hat so they can twiddle their mustache at the same time and talk about the Renaissance era yeah, and how great things were back then while they sip on their wine. Things also, the Renaissance, Renaissance era. <laughs> not at all. Also, Fuck. Does this man realize that the, the Renaissance era was primarily like found, like based in Italy, not France? Like, obviously, France had its Renaissance. They're period, the same say, thing. When we think of the Renaissance, place. it's Italy, right? <clears throat> it's the same thing. France and Italy. Potato, yeah, it's the potato. Same country. Yeah. Excuse. <laughs> <laughs> so this marks off the so Italian days in the bingo card, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> What, right. do we, what do we have so far? Because we got boring, Two. not real Star Wars, I think is... Oh, yes. Uh, we have that somewhere. That'd be in the top right, I think. Not Lucas Star Wars. Oh, yes. Wine from 1922. Okay, don't get me wrong. I liked Andor. No, I didn't. liked it. It was a okay. good show. Liar. It was fine. It was cozy. It was also extremely cozy. boring and made me fall asleep a million times while I was watching it. But it was still a good show. I, whatever, I enjoyed it. Just you could just hear the conflict in him. It's like it's huh? like it's like I didn't like it. It was boring. It was, but no, but it was good enough. I liked it. Um, I can uh, feel the conflict in you. Co I don't know if I would <laughs> describe the show as cozy. I guess it depends on what you mean, because like it's a comfort show of mine. I could sit and just I can relax and enjoy Andor anytime I want, but like. But, like, it's not really a cozy show. No, mm -hmm. it's not a Sunday afternoon movie that you'd call up to with the kids. It's not La La Land, which is a great movie, by the way. It's not American History X. <clears throat> oh, I got a super chat from Oliver Matthews for four ninety nine. Star Wars Theory's mind would melt if he watched a Scorsese film or anything with substance to it. Well, he'd just say it was bad. He would just he would just say that it was like, for, like too complicated and made for no, people who were pretentious. He would, he would he would get bored by it and call it boring, and then people would be like, "No, it was really good." And he'd be like, "No, it was good. It was good. It was good." Give yeah, I money. agree, but it was boring. I'm just yeah. curious though, right now, who is a shorter attention span, well, Star Wars Theory or Doug Walker? Then then he Ooh. would get mad. Then he would get mad if you say that you know, if you if you try to argue that it is better, it's higher art than the type of stuff that he likes. He'd be like, Wolf of Boar Street, am I right? And then I'd yeah. think he was really funny. Someone in chat said we should get him to watch 12 Angry Men. Oh, he would hate oh, that movie. He oh, would die. He would, he would implode. That film. We're yeah, just talking. The Why are they talking made, so, so much? He, he'd be wondering you know why Jur number 5 and Jur number 8 were in like a, like a fucking boxing match or something at some point in the film. <laughs> You know what's interesting is like I'm because we've we, we've spoken uh, a lot on various streams uh, and in private calls about how Dave Filoni is a bit of a plagiarist, um, <laughs> is is I think the polite way of putting it. A little bit. Um, let's, yeah. let's just say he let's, you know let's just say he does a couple of occasional homages, but the point I'm making is I would be I would guarantee that if you showed the films the TV that inspired the things that Filoni wrote and you showed them to Star Wars Theory, he'd decry them as boring. He'd be like, no, it's not It's not a good film. It's too pretentious. It's for, it's for pretentious people who like their cheese and wine. Mm -hmm. Also, side note, when did cheese become pretentious? It's like the most widely eaten thing. I have no idea. Is is is, is pizza tr uh, pretentious now? Apparently so. I mean, if you cheese, eat pizza yes. and watch oh, movies, pizza, you're, you're but... a snob. You're not a snob. <laughs> well, I guess I'm an art snob. <clears throat> I, think, well, I think what he's getting at, because like, you know how people go wine tasting. I've heard of like people go cheese tasting too. I've heard of that. I mean, that is a sure, thing. That happens, but even still, like those aren't really like expensive. Uh, we dine high upon class things fine cheese, and I've, we talk I mean, about I've, Andor as we I've, as we stroke our mustaches. <laughs> I've heard I the love phrase. That. I've heard the phrase "cheese eating surrender monkey." I mean, that's 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 to do with that was a that was an American general talking about the French in terms of the Iraq War. But yeah, yeah. I was yeah. gonna say that the same yeah. seems like a derogatory, yeah. derogatory yeah, thanks. Like French. 
Nice like, for that weird slur directed yeah. at my nationality there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that against French people. <laughs> you can technically... I can technically do it. I'm Haitian, and like I think uh, if there's I any just, culture uh... that has the justification to do so. Oh yeah, but Haiti, you guys have the right to criticize us quite quite vehemently. But yeah. I will say, just to defend just to defend the honor of my country, I will say that actually the surrendering thing is bullshit because if you look at like the country that's won the most military victories and wars ever in its existence, France is top of the list, followed by America. But France yeah. is top okay, of the list. Surrenderer. <laughs> Let's just cut the red and white off the flag. There you, you go. Wouldn't even, you wouldn't even. You wouldn't even have a country if it wasn't for our help. From. You wouldn't even have independence if it wasn't for our revolution. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, the thing <laughs> is, <laughs> Sheev, hold on, Sheev, we wouldn't even have the Statue of Liberty without the French. True. So, well, true. They were Trojan for us. Yeah, they wouldn't have liberty after World War II also, if it wasn't for us. You, you, yeah, you wouldn't have had your revolution if it wasn't for the French. What? <laughs> so, no, the, the American huh? Revolution came first. <laughs> yes, but it was but it only succeeded, that, yeah, it succeeded the French with French support. Yeah. Mm, yeah, totally. So we let like you help. You didn't most recent history in World War II. We, we, you guys we, wouldn't you, be free. We didn't want you to feel like you were missing out, so we let you help us. But like we could have so, got, we had it on our own. Yeah, so I'm Americans... sure. V Valley Forge was famously Washington's <laughs> if, highest if, honor. If, if the Americans wouldn't have had their revolution without the French, and uh, Andor wouldn't have. The rebels wouldn't have had their revolution in Andor without the American the Revolution. It w I mean, <laughs> no, what, what I'm saying is, without and the and French, my there revolution is no Andor. without the yeah. his he had a revolution. You know what? You know. I like Andor quite a bit. I can and live without Andor. Andor if it means the French don't exist. That's true. Well, then you, but then you That's wouldn't true. exist. The sacrifice okay, I'm willing to make. The I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, Bagel you're says just you're just jealous because we have a nice country with lots of like paid sick leave. I'm sorry, oh, I, have, I like I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry. I see the opportunity. The I, I'm sorry. sorry, euphemistic. I'm not. I'll be honest. I'm so sorry. I see the opportunity. I have to take it. Uh, Bagel says she was like if Mahler didn't say the arsler. No, she was like if Mahler knew what an inciting incident is. Uh -huh. Ooh, let's <laughs> move on. Sleepy <laughs> time. Okay, like you want me want to put to sleep? You watch Andor. You want Star Wars? You watch Obi Wan Kenobi. Batman. Oh, what? Huh? Huh? What? He's actually making this no. argument? Uh -huh. No. 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 <laughs> no. Uh, that's that's a perspective. You know what? That's that is a, a crazy argument. If that, I is, wanted... that is a perspective. It's one of the perspectives of the year. If I if I wanted Star Wars, I would watch many, 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 many other things than Kenobi. I'd watch Andor. Like, honestly. Like, watch the OT? A, a lot of the time it's like, hey, do you want to watch Star Wars? And I'm like, cool. And, and then I have to pick and I'm like, do I want to watch, uh, I don't know, A New Hope or Empire or something like that? Or do I want to watch Andor? And typically it's like a really tough call. It, it, it kind of just depends on my mood. But like, man, I'd watch Andor if I want to watch Star Wars. I would never touch Kenobi. I've I've, 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 I've made my Kenobi videos. I'm not but ever going to that. But Kenobi has Luke, and Luke is from the OT. He just said that the Kenobi show is bad. Why would I watch some... Well, I guess the prequels oh, exist. I just thought of a really hilarious but awful comparison, which is like, Star Wars Theory is that guy who when you're like, let's watch a, a World War II movie, and then you put on Schindler's List. It's like, this isn't real World War II. Where's the battles? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the no, guns? It's like fucking like Logan Paul when he saw Oppenheimer. Pfft, I just want to see you the wanna... bomb drop. You want a World War II movie? You turn on Captain America: The First Avenger. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, Logan Paul was you know seeing one dead Japanese guy in the woods wasn't enough for him. He needed to see a whole bomb drop on Hiroshima. <laughs> <laughs> well, unironically, yeah. Oh. If you if you put if you put Star Wars Theory in a room and, and you were like, you could either watch Captain America: The First Avenger or you can watch Schindler's List. You know he's gonna pick Captain America. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, but, but if we if we made if we made him watch both. Which do you think he'd say is better? Oh, the Captain America. Captain. He'd say Captain America is better. Yep. The, the Schindler's List has things like bricks and screws that just aren't in World War II. <laughs> it's talking. It's a bunch of talking. I'll, I'll, I'll talking? be honest. If you if you look at the building of a concentration camp, you're like, I don't like all these bricks and screws. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I feel like Neither all this they. They actually, you know, it's, uh, What's funny, too, is um, what was I going to say? I don't know. Okay. What was I gonna say? This is such a professional, well-made well stream that we've got going on here. Um, fuck! I was gonna say something. Uh, <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> Shit. Um, <laughs> the seriously, Star Wars series is on stream right now. It's so bad to see. <laughs> Well, I mean, he already knows. He already knows of my existence too. So he'd probably be thinking, "Typical C, what an idiot!" And like in this case, yeah, he'd be justified thinking that. <laughs> Fuck, I could not completely slip from my brain. His honest reaction. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, if it's Star all the same Wars to you, I'm gonna continue the video. Now. Yeah, it's fine. Go ahead. It'll come to me eventually. Yeah. <laughs> you watch Revenge of the Sith. You don't watch Obi Wan Kenobi. You watch Revenge of the Sith. Okay, you watch. So he, he just doubled back on. You, so you don't watch Obi Wan Kenobi. You watch Revenge of the Sith. Okay. Oh, um, fuck. I why? just remember what it was. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> he just bricks and screws. <laughs> the funny thing with the bricks and screws bullshit is that bricks and screws already existed in Star Wars and they've been oh, there no, since like a new Yavin. Obviously. Yavin. Yeah. yeah. Do you think, the do, first do you think Rebel buildings base existed? existed. Tools existed. Do you think the existed. set designers... Do you think the set designers on, in Pinewood Studios in the 1970s and 80s were like, oh yeah, we're going to invent an entirely new method of holding bricks and mortar together. It doesn't <laughs> involve gentlemen, bricks. gentlemen, we're reinventing bricks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, just at the production meeting, they're like, so how much would it cost to build a set of bricks and screws? And they're like, oh, you know, $12,000. And George Lucas is like, cool. What if we were to invent, like, self-sealing plastic buildings? And they're like, what the fuck? Of course, of course. 3D printing well, in the 70s. Well, because I'm, I'm thinking of, like, obviously, um, the very stucco, right, designs of Mos Eisley. Um, and I'm like, yeah. cool, yeah, that's that's a that's a great aesthetic for this planet, this desert planet. Um, but if I saw that on Coruscant, I'd be like, what the fuck? The whole of Coruscant, and skyscrapers included, just built out of, like, sealed so it's, it's, so, it's, so it's almost as if different planets are going to have <laughs> different material building their buildings um, that, that we would see here on Earth. It's like it's and like the bricks and Andor serve a narrative purpose too. It's, so it's like the hybrid skyscrapers in Wakanda that they're like mixed with thatch huts. Star Wars there he goes to Europe and he's like wandering around a medieval castle and he sees like the like the wooden like door that has like bolts in it and he's like, what, what are all these bolts doing in the castle? Uh -huh. I don't understand. Well, I'm, just, I'm imagining screws? him. I'm imagining him looking at the um, actual hotel that was used to film like the Lars homestead. Because uh, that's a real thing. It's a real place you can go to in Tunisia. I'm imagining him going there and seeing that and being like, what the fuck? But this was in Star Wars. It can't exist in real life. It, it's like he saw the people complaining about the uh, the um, the very vibrantly colored uh, bikes in Book of Boba Fett or something. Uh, and was trying to make a criticism like that. that is like, it just seems so out of place with Star Wars. But it's like, but bricks and screws... Like okay, if if you saw a character wearing blue jeans, like a pair of blue Levi's jeans, uh, I could see it. I could see that being an argument of why that's yeah, a bit like anachronistic. If I, if I saw a character wearing place, a pair of Adidas, then I'd be like, okay, that maybe maybe dude. that's a little much. Or like or like you could like you could like see the Nike logo on yeah. someone's hoodie. I'd be like, okay, that's different though. <laughs> that's that's, well, a, that's actually that's one a, of the questions I have about Ahsoka is that like Ahsoka's. Ahsoka's shoes are like and like like that's one of the questions I have for Ahsoka because Ahsoka's shoes are a brand I know I've seen those shoes out and about so I'm just like oh that's awkward Jolly I just want <laughs> I just want you to know that you I just like, love that we live like, in a world where for... tracking fobs or something he's perfectly fine with he... is there like a delay or something because like I okay huh no, no, is everything, everything good everything good. I'm making sure that my Wi-Fi is good because, like, Jolly paused for a yeah. second there, and I was like, "Shit, did it cut out again?" And then he started talking. Oh, he's he's paranoid. Yeah, and then I started talking, he's, and, he's, then he's I was, and then I was, and then I was talking. For, got to him. And then I was talking for several seconds, and then C just started talking. So I was like, "Is there like a delay or something?" And the, and that's why he just blatantly interrupted me in the middle of my sentence. Yeah. Hey, no, oh, oh, oh no! Well, the the well, stream was buffering, but it's back. Yeah, yeah somebody, so you cut me off that, or something. I was like, dude, what the fuck? Okay, so there no, is chat, like a chat delay was or literally saying the stream is down. Is stream crashing for anyone else? Oh god. Yeah. If it goes down again, I'm not well, starting again. We're not. It's, we're not it's, even it's, fucking with this. It's it's it's, it's good it's, now. It's good now. Yeah, she's just really. He's just really worried, especially if people stop uh, talking in the middle. of... Fuck you, Southpaw. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see you telegraph that. I saw that coming a mile away. Fuck you. <laughs> no, but like Jolly was Probably saying something. Him. Jolly was saying something, and then he just paused for a, like a like an unnatural amount of time between saying words, and I was like, oh no. Anyway. But yeah. 
Go ahead, Chief. You people suck. I, are you doing this on purpose? No, I, no, I'm, no, no waiting, I'm waiting for you to start the video. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm letting you speak so I can say my thing after. Fuck. Italian now. That 6% Italian is coming out, and I'm starting to get a little bit angry here. You want to watch... Cringe. What was that? God, I want to shoot myself. Why did you do that? Star Wars, you watch the first Keep six going. movies, and you watch the Clone Wars. That's Star Wars. <laughs> you want to create a Star Wars project, Clone Wars is you create Star the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. But not the way it was written by Joby Harold and directed by Deborah Chow. <laughs> Get someone competent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What was the fucking point? Yeah. Fair enough. I can't fault him there. I, I mean, I know what point he was making. It's just like, why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get the mic moving, but the camera moving was kind of. I, yeah, I don't know what I well, don't know what the mic was about, but like, yeah, the camera that's, shake. That's the thing. Yeah, with the mic, I think he just he started with the mic, realized that that's really idiotic, and then went to the camera. He's like, wait, there's no microphones you know, in Star Wars. I, I know he doesn't like care about his editors as people, but like, I feel like he could have asked his editor to be like, can you just cut out the part where I shook the mic? That was dumb. I wish point the editor's yeah. like, yeah, sure. Can you give me some credit? No, die. <laughs> it's, like was, it's like I was saying earlier, uh, you know, the the big issues like labor strikes and shit in Hollywood, uh, you know, like with uh, when it comes to quality content, you can't rush people and you need to give them proper compensation for their work. Oh, looky here. Star Wars theory, not giving proper compensation. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Work. I mean, that's, that's another thing that's been happening recently is like, so then his his old editor, Star Wars Elseworlds came out and was like, yeah. Uh, or, or like someone leaked DMs between Elseworlds and Theory about like you know, Elseworlds had asked for uh, credit for editing and Theory was like, nope, I already linked your channel in the description and you're getting paid, so fuck you. He's a good guy. He's mm. he's a, he's a, I will he's a good I will person. say what. Hang on. So I will say, absent other context, I have a I have a mild degree of sympathy with that perspective. In as in as much as. If you are not friends with someone, if you have paid them for a service, and then they are, and after that exchange has been done, they're like, I also feel entitled to you doing publicity on my behalf. I'd be like, no, fuck off. However, with an editor that you have worked with for some time, who is not making unreasonable demands, who is just going to me like, look, man, I've done a lot of work for you, and this is obviously like my biggest uh, way of getting support. Uh, would you mind shouting me out in maybe a video or two? I really don't think it's that much of an ask. Like, I I understand why, as a general rule, if someone's being, like, really aggressive about it or, like, feels entitled to it, that would be annoying. But just being asked politely by your editor, would you mind shouting me out? Mm -hmm. I, I, to turn that down, like, you have to be some kind of dick, honestly. Yeah. Yep. Especially since credit is just how editors get jobs. Oh, like that? yeah. Like, you gotta be a real fucking lunatic to not, uh, not be okay with that. Just give him credit. It's not hard little thing in the bottom corner or something it's really easy yeah. to do even if you're not prepared to interrupt the flow of your video which i don't understand why because you could just put it at the end right of like by the way this video was made with the help of so and so go check them out yeah, yeah. but even if you're unwilling to interrupt the flow of your video because you are just that much of a narcissist so, oh, sorry i meant perfectionist about your videos <laughs> you could just put it in the description right you could just yeah. be like here's here's my editor in the description yeah literally anything but he's too much of a fucking lunatic so grifter 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 more like just a fucking piece of shit let's just let's just be more direct with it he's not just a grifter he's a piece of shit he's a meanie i don't even know her i am a who knows the characters and respects the characters he's you get john favreau and dave john. why didn't john favreau and dave filoni <laughs> uh -oh. do the kenobi show <laughs> <laughs> because they had it would have more unnecessary cameos <laughs> Then it would have been even worse. Cal Kested would show up for no reason. It would have probably so for would no have reason. <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> Sorry. Why didn't Dave Filoni? Uh, I I love that he was like, yeah, you uh, you, you want to make the Obi Wan Kenobi show, you get people who care about the characters and who respect Star Wars and this this is this, and I'm like, yes. And he goes, you get Dave Filoni and John Favreau. And it's like, no. <laughs> well, obviously. <laughs> Uh, obviously, you 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 have Ahsoka uh, shoehorned into the Kenobi show to further justify this uh, <laughs> this meme right here. I'm not reading that out. I'm not showing it on stream. No. <laughs> no. People will That's know when to get the monetized. People I'll, will know. I'll, what I'm I'll, talking I'll say about. the first sentence, and everyone will know what I'm talking about. Luke, did I ever tell you about Ahsoka Tano? <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's the meme.
Yep. Uh, that's, that's all you're getting. Everyone we need to get George to use Obi Wan Kenobi voice. what that is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I'd love to get George to read out this entire text. And... <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. George. Uh, C's friend uh, in his server. Oh right. Yeah. I was like, do you mean George Lucas? No, the, the guy <laughs> yes, with the David Tennant profile picture. Oh okay. okay. Anyway, he does he does a killer Obi Wan impression. It's insane. Why didn't they do all shows? I mean, okay, Andor was fine. It was, all shows? Keep, keep the guy there, but even he said, he's like, half the time I forgot I was doing a Star Wars show. Uh, this is just... Like, there's so uh, much out to of content. Uh, down. Uh, okay, so... Well, that is called quoting someone out of context, not, and it is, in fact, frowned upon in most societies. That's not what Tony <laughs> that's what Gilroy said. you accuse said. other people of doing. That's not what he said. He said that he was making a show. He was opening a different lane for those who may not necessarily be Star Wars fans. That's That's what he said. He didn't say, you, oh, I, I forgot I was making you a Star Wars show. What? And by the way, even if that is what he said, like, okay. think, again, there are many there are many contexts where that's fine, right? Like, so if he's going like, oh, I got so caught up in the sweep of what I was doing and like making the show, it, it was all feeling so alive to me that half the time I even forgot it was fiction. I, I forgot it was a Star Wars show. I just, just treated it like it was a, you know, an art that was unfolding. That's fine. <laughs> if you then cherry pick that, that sentence to be like, oh, he said he doesn't even remember that it's Star Wars. I'm like, that's not what he said, though, in either meaning or full quotation. You lying piece of shit. Well, and so, because people are taking that quote, people who don't like Andor, and they're like, yeah, see, he's not even a fan of Star Wars. He doesn't even like Star Wars, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, so first of all, tell me why that's bad. Because if, 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 he's, if he's like a self-admitted not Star Wars fan or whatever, but he then made Andor, then I don't give a shit if he likes the other movies. I don't give a fuck. That, that, that is not a problem to me. As long as it's consistent with, you know, the canon, and it is. Um, he, he he is the, I've talked about this before, he's the, like, the only person working on these shows who bothered to use Wikipedia in order to make sure he got the little details right. Yeah. I mean, John Harrison Favreau Ford and Dave Filoni don't fucking do that. Also, Harrison Ford doesn't like Star Wars. He doesn't like Star Wars fans. Is he not the right actor for Han Solo? Mm-hmm. Do we suddenly not like Han? Do we not like anything that he's in? Alec Guinness, uh, too. Didn't like, uh, mm-hmm. didn't like Star Wars. Didn't like Star Wars There goes fans. the OT. Because Han and Obi-Wan yep. don't even like Star Wars. Carrie Fisher's made fun of Star Wars fans before, and George Lucas. Yeah, I remember... She respects uh, it, but she makes fun of it. Or made fun of it. I, re- I remember it came out that Kelly Marie Tran had never seen a Star Wars movie before she did The Last Jedi. And everyone gave her shit for that. And it's like, but did she need to? Like, like I, I agree that, like, you should be, like, getting people who actually do love this franchise and are passionate about it in on these projects. Um, like, because John Boyega was, like, a huge fan of Star Wars, and he cried when he found out that he got the job. Um, and that's great. And I'm so happy for him. And, I, and I'm really glad he got, well, I wish he'd gotten the opportunity to actually, like, do it properly. But, like, I'm glad he at least, you know, was happy. I was happy for him then. He, um, he was happy past tense. Yeah. Yeah, but like it's it's fine if Kelly Marie Tran isn't some big fucking hyper nerd for Star Wars. That's okay, as long as she does her job, and she did her job. She's not the reason why Rose is a bad character. Well, I just like the idea that these people will like watch the prequels or whatever, and they're like, oh well, you know, c- clearly because he's in this movie, Christopher Lee must be a diehard Star Wars fan. Must have all the action figures on his shelf. I'm like, do you really think people like Christopher Lee <laughs> or like any of these like high profile actors who are in Star Wars? like Terrence Stamp or even Liam Neeson. Do you think any of these people gave the slightest of fucks no. about the franchise? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I, You and McGregor did. But like, I don't, I don't, Liam I, Neeson I, didn't I, give I'd crap. be willing to believe that Christopher Lee at least was a fan of Star Wars in the sense that, like, you know, I'm a fan of... Um, what's, a, what's a movie... Fuck, Nosferatu. I, my, Nosferatu. My my brain just completely fried. Like, Nosferatu. Just, just, just a just a thing I'd go to see in theaters, and then be like, "Oh, it's pretty good," and then never see it. Like Top Gun Maverick. I'm a fan mm-hmm. of Top Gun Maverick. I watched the movie. I liked it. I don't have any Top Gun Maverick. I don't have any Top Gun memorabilia. If if they made a Top Gun three and they cast me in it, would that suddenly like be a bad thing? I feel like. People also don't seem to understand that, like, Star Wars is one of the least interesting things that Chris Lee has ever been involved with. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, like, yeah, it's like, it's like I think the most of... significant events in human history would uh, take the cake for him. Yeah, like Star Wars would be in the yeah, bottom three. 
that that dude had a legendary life. I'm not I, mean, yeah. lie. I mean, top top of the man's list. He got to be the dentist in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, like honestly, yeah, if, we, if we're course. talking about fandom, like uh, like um, lollipops, <laughs> Lord, Lord of the Rings. Like Christopher Lee was a genuinely huge like, Lord of the Rings. Like, fan. I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Christopher Lee needed to be a Star Wars fan to be in Star Wars. I think, I think Star Wars needed to be a fan of Christopher Lee to have right. him in it. <laughs> it's like Chuck Norris jokes. <laughs> My favorite Christopher Lee story is unironically when uh, Peter Jackson was giving him direction on how to react to being stabbed in the back for uh, for his death and Return of the King. Have you ever and Christopher Lee had to had to correct him because he's actually killed a man. Oh yeah, because <laughs> Christopher, Christopher Lee used to be part of that like, special operations executive in World War II. Like he was dropped behind enemy he, lines as a spy. He's and he just so someone. cool. He literally, he, he so literally, cool. he literally knew Ian Fleming. Like, oh, he's, he was his cousin. Thing. Ian Fleming was his cousin. Yeah, mm -hmm. like he was actually like somewhat of an inspiration to James Bond. Mm -hmm. Again, legendary man. Like Star Wars is in like the bottom three yeah. uh, most significant things <laughs> of his life. He, well, he witnessed Christopher Lee biopic Jesus. Yeah, he witnessed the last guillotining of a person in France. He was there for that execution. So badass. Um. Also, as well, we just need to be really honest with ourselves. Star Wars is just <laughs> a franchise of films. Like it's not religion or anything it's just if people are hired to work on star wars it's a job and i guarantee there were tons of people who worked in makeup or the costume department or whatever uh, for the last jedi or for just the sequel trilogy or even the current star wars shows where they're just hired for a job and they don't well, care about star literally wars literally everyone on a new hope because like yeah. Star Wars didn't exist then so everyone hired for that film <clears> was just like it's yep. a just a job it's literally a job i mean mark hamill like took the job day. because because uh wasn't it wasn't it like robert england was crashing on his couch or something and he he'd auditioned for the role of luke skywalker and got turned down because he was too old for it but he, he 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 looked over he you know he turned over to his good buddy mark hamill was like you should apply for this i think you'd i think you'd get the job and he did yeah yeah. I always love stories like that. It's like um, Chris Hemsworth didn't audition for Thor. Liam Hemsworth did. Chris just drove him to the audition, and they saw they saw Chris in the waiting room. And they're like, "Yeah, you're our guy." I'm Hilson <laughs> for Thor. Yeah, Which, like, I just I just like the idea that that must have been like, the frostiest car ride home between like Liam and Chris. <laughs> oh. Well, it's kind of like um Ian McKillen and Kate Blanchett for Lord of the Rings. They were, they were both like, "Yeah, we we read The Hobbit, but we weren't really interested in the Lord of the Rings books." And then they were like, "Yeah, we were hired to do a job, and we did the best that we could." And then they did. Well, it's the same for Viggo Mortensen. Viggo Mortensen had never yeah. read Lord of the Rings. Had nothing. It was like hired last minute. The only reason he took the job was that his son was a fan. So I got a super chat yeah. just now from Darth Chaco. Uh, for two dollars. Yeah, yeah, I, I've seen him around on Twitter. He said if yeah. Filoni made Obi Wan, Saber would be green. That's so true. I don't. Was that like a he changes, the fact he randomly that he changes, changes like lightsaber colors, colors and stuff. for no reason? Yeah, yeah. He just fucks around with things that are already established for no reason. Yeah, he just does. And then, and you know, fans would be like, "Well, it was blue in A New Hope, so what the fuck's that about?" And and then fans would be like, "It's you know, lightsaber colors are allowed to change." Lightsaber colors are subjective. <laughs> well, the visuals aren't even canon, so it doesn't matter. Can, can <laughs> yeah, we even say? Can we even canon. say that any lightsaber is any color? Maybe Mace Windu's lightsaber isn't purple. Sorry, Sam Jackson. Yeah, actually, Mace Windu himself was purple, and his lightsaber was black. Thanks, Pablo. You <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> wait, wait. So, what does that make the dark saber? What if it was actually like yellow? <laughs> And it's just called uh, the dark saber for some arbitrary reason that has nothing to do with its color. It's called the dark saber because Tar Vizsla was black and the Mandalorians are racist. Ah, yes. And Tar Vizsla is actually an ancestor to Lando. Oh god! Oh no! Uh, the, the Lando show is going to become a Mandalorian. <laughs> oh, the Lando, the, the Lando Oh, the Lando it just it's it's so perfect i could see it now just i am so tired no, i'm so tired of being trying to be so nice to people man i don't <laughs> huh? what you just called an entire fan base pretentious when were you nice that's not nice yeah when was this i don't remember <laughs> nice so, smaller okay here's the thing you're tired of that. here's the thing about Chief, do, do we miss some part of the video where he was nice yes we skipped over that whenever my wife oh, crashed wow well, yeah. that's he, what it was then he was giving What's out like good? money to the homeless. He was curing blind people. Yeah. He was building thousands of wells in Kenya. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but here's the thing that's so frustrating about Star Wars theory is he'll say the stupidest shit imaginable. And then people will be like, hey, that was dumb. 
And then he'll, he'll like, you know, recoil and he'll play the victim and be like, I'm just trying to do my thing, you know, and, and, and I'm, and I'm the victim here. It's, it's, I, I watched this movie recently, Shattered Glass with Hayden Christensen. You guys seen it? No. I don't know. No. Uh, it's a great movie. He plays, a, he plays like this, this manipulative little shit, um, who always gets his way because he's super nice and charming, but like deep down he's, he's kind of, he's never really grown out of being a child. Every time he's getting confronted for something, he's like, are you mad at me? I didn't do anything wrong, stuff like that. Uh, and then he'll just go and flagrantly like, uh, m- like make up. He's a journalist, and he makes up sources for his uh, his articles that he writes. This is based on a real person, by the way, Stephen Glass. Look him up. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what he kind of reminds me of, where he's just like, I'm just kind of, I'm just doing my thing. I'm just voicing my opinion. I didn't do anything wrong. And then he'll go and be like, also, Andor fans are shit. It's just my opinion, <laughs> though. It's okay. Stop being so mean opinion, to me. We my opinion and it's like it's like no he's we're not, not fucking secret buddy i wonder if there's ever been a youtuber who, who who went and publicly said like oh i'm really tired of people who say it's just my opinion let me have my opinion <laughs> gotta be yeah. so embarrassing if that youtuber then went on star wars theory streams and and, and was pleased when he acted <laughs> like a yes man yep. that would be very embarrassing It'd be very embarrassing if that if that same YouTuber also uh, shared very strong opinions about something, and then when challenged on those opinions, just went to go, well, I just didn't like it. Well, I said this recently on Twitter, is opinions aren't sacred. You post your p- opinion publicly online, you're inviting criticism. People are going to tell you you're wrong, or they're going to disagree, or they're going to explain yeah. why they disagree with you. And it's... you're just going to have to accept that because you're the one who's publicly put it out there, so be an adult and not cry and piss and shit yourself over it like it's not that bad it's not just that either it's just like i mean you're not he's not just putting out like super subjective claims he's trying he's trying to make more objective arguments about why it's bad and he's making shitty arguments it's like you're gonna make qualifying statements you're gonna need to back them up it's not hard if if you're gonna make bad Uh, qualifying statements then it's like we get to criticize them counterpoint how it works i refuse (laughs) No, uh, fair enough. Fair. Fair. You know well, why? Yeah. I'll just kill myself. So yeah. he, 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 the, the, the point I was trying to make though is like he tries to paint this narrative that like people who go after him on Twitter or whatever, or, or who quote unquote clip him out of context, uh, are just sad losers who just want to pick on him and like take everything he says and, and and shit on him, even though he's just he's just a guy, he's just you know just a Star Wars fan trying to say his piece, and it's like, but that's not what you're doing. You have the largest mm-hmm. audience of any Star Wars channel on YouTube. Um, so, like, what you say carries a lot of weight in this fandom. Um, if you want to be just a guy who's just just putting his, putting his thoughts out there, um, maybe don't have a fucking YouTube channel with millions of subscribers. Just a thought. Um, yeah. And, Counterpoint. Money. And then if you are going to be this <laughs> big, influential... Uh, I say influential. He he's got he's got more influence than a lot of people, but like he's really pretty small fry, even still. But if you're gonna be this big YouTube channel, right? Like, don't fucking go and slander an entire fan base uh, for a show just because you think that show is boring. Like, like you're not at that point. You're not just some guy voicing your opinion. You're just you're, you're poisoning the well. You're being a dick. He's just doing a Notting Hill, or he's like, you know, just remember, I'm just a, I'm just a YouTuber standing in front of a fan base, well, asking, thing, it not I mean, to, asking it not to mock me. And this when is I a... made my Star Wars three video back in 2021, uh, his response to my criticism of just taking responsibility and accountability for his psychopathic fans' uh, vitriolic behavior uh, and just condemning that, uh, his stance was basically, oh. Well, I don't really care. It's not. It's not my business. You know, I'm a YouTuber. It's, mm-hmm. just, it's just my own opinions and stuff. And it's like, okay, but you're the one that's cultivating that culture. They're your fans. You have the ability to tell them, hey, maybe don't fucking harass children because that's insane. Mm-hmm. But no, he just lets it happen because he's a negligent piece of shit. Like, no, you don't have to do it. But it's morally the right thing to do, and if you want to present yourself as being this guy who's not toxic, as he loves to claim he uh, he is, um, then do that. Actually, own up to it. Ah, uh, those kids had it coming. Well, yeah, of course, of course. Does. <laughs> he never cared for well, them. Innocent, innocent or otherwise. otherwise. 
Bola Andy says, Sheev, I disagree with that statement because Star Wars Theory's views have decreased over the years, and that is possibly the reason why he wants to associate more with Mauler in the Phantom Menace. That's true. He's losing a lot of relevancy because he's kind of a dumbass. Well, yeah, it's like whenever... The place well, the classic games move, right? Prizes is like, if you just continue making low-effort, low-quality shit videos where all you say is bullshit and, stu- and like, you know, obviously not as many people are going to tune in. You know, maybe five years ago, whenever you just stuck to making lore videos, you were you were seeing an uptick in, in viewership. Um, maybe go back to that. I don't know. Well, yeah, because this is the thing, right? Like, this is like the classic path that every single large fan base YouTuber who's seeing a downturn in, in popularity takes, right? Particularly if their entire shtick was putting out inarticulate, incompetent, ignorantly constructed uh, ramblings that are just their own opinions and playing grievance, like either grievance politics or just playing the card of, of, of voicing grievances, right? You are inevitably going to get sucked up into that weird insular culture of, uh, you know, circle jerking YouTubers who just, who, for whom that is their entire raison d'etre. And like... <laughs> More power to you. You'll you'll definitely grind out a living that way. There are plenty of gullible fools who are willing to give you their money, but don't expect us to hold you in any kind of esteem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. Well, it's like remember when when it's like when Mars like well it was a it was a career move to <laughs> oh yeah that was the <laughs> tights right it was a career move that was such a Freudian slip it, it was another a career chat. move. Uh, from Neil for five dollars. Star Wars theory confuses me with this video and comes off as a weasel. I don't get the appeal. Also, great stream. I'm hey. learning a lot. Thanks. Weasels are hey. cute. Leave weasels, weasels alone. wobble, but they don't fall down. I like Ooh, weasels. To his feet. It's weevils, not weasels. Fuck. This entire stream um, is ruined now. Only, uh, only now. I, I consider him a lot worse than that. I consider him uh, a virus. A plague. Yeah. He's just, just a think, sickness. I, I wouldn't... I, I wouldn't elevate his importance to that level, right? Like, he's not a pandemic. He's not some kind of force of nature. He's just, at the end of the day, what he is, is he's a, he's a clown. He's a buffoon with the too large a micro, uh, megaphone. Well. Um, that's really all he is. And sure, I, I feel, he can set himself up as, like, the voice of a disgruntled, powerful minority. But see, really, he's really just a tool. I can, if we're using I can, the animal analogy, I would do clownfish, but clownfish are actually pretty interesting animals, and he's just yeah, a loser. You're like cool. a clownfish. He's really not that funny. <laughs> also, clownfish, clownfish are trans. They change gender. That is true. They're hermaphroditic. Um, yeah. Dominant female dies. Dominant male that, takes the position. Does that, that, does, that, <laughs> does that mean that Finding Nemo Whoa, is garbage. both? Yep. Well, that's the joke, right? Oh, is that by the end of if Finding Nemo had been biologically accurate by the end of the movie, Nemo's dad would have been Nemo's mum. <laughs> no, not even by the end of the movie. As oh, soon as Coral died, he would have started changing. Yeah. <laughs> and then Nemo would have been considered the dominant male at that point. Oh god! Well, they've had yeah, no, I, I just ruined. Yes, the movie. they would have made it. Oh no! I ruined the movie for you guys. No, I, I like I love the movie. It's, <laughs> it's adorable, <laughs> but yeah, no. It, the the science behind clownfish is uh, pretty weird, but they're fucking cool animals. I wanted to be marine biologist as a kid, so anyway, I, I want to be a clownfish. But yeah, moving I on. Be a clownfish. Here, if you don't like what I have to say, don't watch my, my videos. I'm not here for them. I'm here for me. I'm here for Star Wars, George Lucas, and to protect the legacy because, quite frankly, dude, I'm the only one that keeps doing it. And- I'm the only one who no. knows this. <laughs> George mm. Lucas must be really fucking embarrassed to have you as one of his fans, dude. Giving That's apparently the only person who's vibe. like who's holding the line for George Lucas. It's just it's this clown. That just has such I'm the real Mandarin energy. <laughs> 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 Yeah, no, this is really sad, and I feel bad for George that this is the fucking legacy he's left is idiots like this. Like, yeah, George made a lot do... of really amazing things, and he deserves to be remembered and every... appreciated for better than that. Every time we have someone saying, like, toolish things like this about Star Wars, we need to have, like, a Kool-Aid man moment where, like, Harrison Ford just punches through the wall and, like, clocks him <laughs> and then just walks off. God, I'd love that. And they make clips of me on TikTok or whatever, they can keep doing it, but I'm literally the only one who keeps driving the point home. Man. That's Star Wars. And now he's playing That's, like this what George like created. epic, upbeat music. It's not this shit right that's now. been created now Animal and given everything. a crap budget so that <laughs> She-Hulk can shine <laughs> through as she twerks with Meg the Stallion. This has nothing to do with Star Wars. I just don't... <laughs> I don't understand, man. He sounds like he's gonna cry. It feels oh, like this. It feels like... It feels like Stallion twerking with She-Hulk. 
<laughs> you know what this feels like? This feels like buzzwords that he's throwing out specifically to like, because he knows that this will rile people up. Just throw in, you know, she Hulk twerky with Megan the Stallion, piss a bunch of people off, rem remind them of how much that makes them angry, and that's just going to bring in the money. Like yeah. Cope. Mm hmm. God. Uh, I have a question about the bingo card. Earlier, when he was making comments about to Tony Gilroy, does that qualify as the uh, square Tony Gilroy hit Star Wars or no? I'd say so. Yes. Yeah, absolutely it does. Right. Cool. So where are we at the bingo card? Five. Nice. <laughs> Get it, man. How can this $4 billion it, company man. be handled still by these buffoons who don't even understand the characters bring me to tears also is lucas from a four billion dollar company like i'm pretty sure george undersold in terms of the actual value of uh lucas i don't IP. know i have no idea how to measure that or like if we Hold have on. any kind of figures for it but all i don't know is is the music he's playing from fallout because I, I don't know why it's dollar be company fine uh, through she twerks with meg the stallion is it well, uh, I, have no idea. I, can't I just don't get it. All right, it's we'll playing. It. I got it. Hold on. I, I've, I'm so sorry. I've got to do this. Man. What are you doing? How can this four billion dollar company? <laughs> 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 I have to do it. <laughs> I heard him say that. I had to slow him down. <laughs> What is this, a Michael Bay film? Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a reference, isn't it? No, she, Donald, it's, Michael it's Bay films are too intellectually it's stimulating for him. It's a reference to Total Look. Yeah, Total Look. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Nearly. <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> oh, Be handled <laughs> by these buffoons who don't even understand the characters, but also assign these nitwits to write for these legendary characters and at the same time give them oh, the pennies 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 he gave <laughs> them pennies for the kenobi <laughs> show with a budget looks... of 90 million dollars i know that he's not uh, he there's there's no way he's reading from a script there's no way this is scripted but it almost looks like he's like looking at a script. It does. I feel like he's, he's just looking at, at the image of the uh, of the of the She-Hulk. But or, no, he's looking at the image of of She-Hulk twerking with Megan Thee Stallion, and it's giving him motivation <laughs> to continue this up this this, this uplifting speech. It's gonna get a fucking broadsword. I'm just gonna march into battle while thinking of this speech. It's just ringing in my head as I'm gonna go <laughs> slaughter the dreaded Kathleen Kennedy demons. <laughs> just. <laughs> Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> this is really, really pathetic. It's so sad. He's such a fucking loser. God, he thinks so highly of himself. He really does. Anyway. But then they want to give She-Hulk the most money because it's what, CGI? Do you guys yes, remember yes. the ending of She-Hulk? What the hell did that they- That has nothing to do with I, CGI. I... <laughs> Also, the ending had a lot of CGI also, too. Like also, the Captain Robot was CGI. Also, yes, I do remember. Unfortunately, <laughs> due to Hulk's son. This no, you this guys feels remember? like a joke though. <laughs> this rant feels like a, like a like a parody. Like I, uh, like like if fucking Drew Gooden or something was like making a was like making a video <laughs> this feels... on this subject matter, and he would do something like this as a joke. I think I think this is going to be maybe this will be the, the the burn that he needs to hear. He's talking like She-Hulk's caricatures of the Phantom Menace. Yeah, that's not gonna. Do you think that's gonna dissuade him? He thinks they're cool. Yeah. He likes them. Uh, he wants to be part actually, of their clique. <sighs> yeah, but but like, well, the point being that She-Hulk caricaturized them, right? Right. He's the very thing that She-Hulk makes fun of like like the point like he's not even yeah like he's not even the remotely uh like uh, what, what what's what's the word um i don't know i have no idea where you're going yeah, with this. what is this what's happening oh i got another super chat go ahead and read the super chat while i try to gather my thoughts oh there was no <laughs> Uh, there was no message to it, just from Robert Paulson for four ninety nine. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Robert Paulson. Very generous. Yeah. 
So you, you've given uh, you've given Southpaw your brain then, or something. Yeah. No. I'm, I'm going to continue the video because I don't know that this is going anywhere, Southpaw. Yeah, no. Let's go ahead. <laughs> Remember, and why does Andor have a two hundred fifty million dollar budget? I mean, I could give you a million. Fantastic. Again, well, we've, we've already we've already done this. Yeah, it, I yeah. feel like we should it have paid twenty thirty property. million at least to Hayden, twenty thirty million to Ewan, sixty what? million right there. No, that's so uh, much money. That's absurd. No. That is absurd. That is ridiculous. That they is will insane. be highly paid. But thirty million money? dollars for Hayden Christensen. Who? I'm sorry. He's not some big name. You know, he's not like fucking Tom Cruise or Nicolas Cage or something. Robert and even, and even the then, like, I would... Million I million for uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, and that's because he's one of the biggest actors in the world. Yeah, like, that's absurd. That is absurd, and he knows it's absurd. There's, yeah, there's no way that Ewan McGregor is commanding a $30 million salary on anything. But also, yeah. he's, he's demanding that Kenobi have a higher budget. Because he wants it to be like to look as best as it possibly can, but now he's saying, "Yeah, and sixty million of that budget should have gone to two of the actors, one of whom only has like a couple of lines and appears for, in, you know, in terms of his face for about two minutes." Brilliant, brilliant, great. That's no. a cool way to artificially inflate the budget for no fucking reason. <laughs> I wonder... also, uh, that, by the way, because this is how economics works. If you start handing out thirty million dollar like pay packets to your two main actors, one of whom is only in it for two minutes. What do you think your other actors are going to start demanding? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. and now you've basically collapsed Lucasfilm and Disney and the entire film industry because now nobody can afford anybody. Yep. Well done. So that's a really dangerous precedent if that were to just keep happening and that was just a normal thing to do for these random two Star Wars actors. See, so Star Wars Theory is an imbecile, and we know he's an imbecile, but like, I, I think he doesn't seem to understand how much money $30 million is. Like, because we're talking about I mean, obviously not if he thinks that 90 million is pennies, but like, cause he's, he's probably looking at this and he's looking at Disney and how it, it's like, you know, Lucasfilm is a $4 billion company. So he says, and Disney's, you know, infinitely more than that in, in terms of his, uh, very uneducated viewpoint on how th this industry works. So he probably sees $30 million to Disney as nothing. Just, of course, you, of mm -hmm. course, you'll give Hayden Christensen thirty million dollars. That's barely anything. Yeah, it's funny. money can just be grown game. on trees and just print. Well, you can just it's, print more. And it's, it's all like, good. It's like when a child thinks that their parents' credit card is an infinite wealth of money, right? And like well, you can just use it to buy anything that you want. Fortnite. Let's put this in perspective. So, thirty million dollars is one thousand Halloweens. Yep. <sighs> Jesus make, fucking uh, Christ. A thousand <laughs> Halloween movies for thirty million dollars. Man, that hurt me a lot. Wow. How many? How many of those movies could have uh, Buster Rhymes though? True. Oh, that's true. Only one. Well, yeah, what's Halloween two's budget? No. 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 no! no! Hang on, which, which is the Halloween that has Buster Rhymes in it? Is that H two O? Resurrection. That's, that's resurrection. Uh, resurrection. And he had okay. an arc. Do you want the? Uh, <laughs> I want the budget. Oh, budget for fifteen Halloween million dollars. You you get two Halloween twos for for thirty million dollars. <laughs> we could have two Buster Rhymes arcs for for, for thirty million dollars. Or wait, did you want the number for Resurrection? Because that's when that's yeah. what he's in. Yeah, that's 15. what I looked up. Yeah, fifty million. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so you can, you can get two two Buster Rhymes arcs for thirty million dollars. And don't you what want about that? That's cinema. What, what it is buzz? cinema. He had an arc. Let's, let's, let's wrap this up, guys. Let's keep me on. Okay. Yeah. They're, oh shit, you have the whole budget for the show. But they give 250 million to Ander, 250 million Ander. to or 225 million Ander. to She-Hulk. You're looking at 500 million, you're looking at half a billion dollars for two shows, which honestly aren't even the most important things in either of their franchises. Wow. What the hell are these people thinking? And you're wondering why South Park is making these kinds of <laughs> comments towards <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy. Oh, it's because Oh my god. god. I don't think yeah, he's such an idiot. POV, <laughs> you don't understand comedy. So for the oh my god, so for those who are otherwise uh, too brain dead to understand this, South Park makes fun of everybody. They don't pick sides really. The Kathleen Kennedy episode made fun of Kathleen Kennedy, and it did make fun of Disney for sure. But it <laughs> equally it equally made fun of the, the exact brand of people that Star Wars Theory is now representing. Like Cartman mm -hmm. is not someone who's ever meant to represent you positively. Understand this. I if haven't seen are, the South Park episode. I don't plan if to. You, if you agree with Cartman at the start of an episode, they are making fun of you. That's the yes. point. 
Hartman is not is not someone you look to and be like, yeah, he's he's got good points. The only also, moment when he thinks South Park of all shows is on his fucking side. The but also, hang part, on, just just to really break everyone's hearts here in terms of the budget thing. So the entire budget for Arcane was ninety million dollars, which works out to be about ten oh, per episode. Hmm. Ten, <laughs> 10 million per episode. Oh, insane. So so you could have had for the for instead of Obi Wan Kenobi, we could have had an entire season of Arcane. But also <gasps> Thirty million dollars, which is what he wants to pay Hayden. You could have had three episodes of Arcane. Oh <laughs> my God! Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, for an actor that shows up for a grand total of two minutes Arcane in this garbage ass so show. That's so funny. Arcane <laughs> is like revolutionary for animation. It's just people. <clears throat> it's one of the mo- it's one of the greatest animated shows that's ever come out. And well, you don't need animated. Out, it's, just, it's just one of the greatest shows that's come out. Well, I know, but I'm ta- just talking about like the visuals, right? Like, um, oh, it's cause, stunning because that's where the budget would have gone to in terms of like what theory is mm-hmm. probably thinking about. And it's got some of the best animation ever, just ever. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he probably didn't watch Arcane. Big theory. Think. Oh, I'm sure he didn't watch Arcane. Sam says in his super chat. Oh, hey Sam! Yes. Sent a super chat for two pounds. Think theory, think. Oh, because he's he's doing the pose. Why did Vander drink the Kool Aid? <laughs> Perfect. Why did you make me do this? You're fighting, so you go whatever. Watch everyone on Earth die. Think, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen like there's like a video uh, edit where instead of uh, Omni Man, it's SpongeBob beating the shit out of Mark. Yeah. <laughs> No, I saw the one though where it's Omni Man beating the shit out of Squidward. That one's amazing. <laughs> I mean, that one's also I've seen, good. I've seen the one that replaces uh, Omni Man's dialogue with Fletcher's. <laughs> I've oh, seen that, but with uh, but with Aang from Legend of Korra. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I will fuck you like a pig. <laughs> the people there clearly aren't using their brains and it seems like i'm taking crazy pills i'm starting to feel like i'm mugatu uh, it's like does nobody see this and we're all just standing around like are they stupid <laughs> <laughs> No, no Star Wars theory. You, you are the only, truly you are a visionary amongst men. Star Wars theory. You are the only human on planet Earth who's ever noticed that the Star Wars Disney era has been quite bad. Yep. And truly, you are an exception. And you're the only one the holding the line in terms of like actually honoring George's legacy. You're the only I'm the one. Only cares. one who knows. This. I mean, really, George Lucas should just get on his hands and knees and thank you. You should bow down mm. and, and praise of your ma- you know, magnificence. Just the fucking ego on this man, dude. Yeah, he is a conceited fucking douchebag. Anyway. Hey, it's okay. We got Andor. Andor's the best Star Wars we've ever... It's not! Yes, it's Blade it Runner! Is. With a it's Star a Wars theme! Uh, explain uh, that. I, I need you to explain that comment to me. He does not explain it. No, Sheev, I need you to explain that comment to me. You're going to have to stand in for him here. I have no idea how you could do that comparison. I... Okay, well, let's see. They, have, they both have no very gritty saber. aesthetics, right? They both no have very Jedi? dystopian aesthetics. Um, in the first ten minutes. They're both very well shot. Ha- Harrison Ford is associated with both franchises, I guess? <laughs> um, They were both made <laughs> by movie studios. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh... Um... They, they, they have, have neon lights. Neon yeah, lights. They have the color blue at some point. Uh, they've got they've, they've got memorable monologues. You know what Jolly and I were talking about? Because C and I watched uh, V for fin- V for Vendetta. I always say V for Vendetta because of the way. Whatever. Idiot. Fuck you. C and I were watching that not too long ago. So Jolly and I were talking about like how much like Andor clearly took inspiration from that film. You know, if I was gonna if I was gonna fucking compare Andor to a movie. I'd, I'd probably pick that, but also, you know, you know, two things that V for Vendetta and Blade Runner have in common is that they're both really good. So, I wouldn't even consider that a bad thing. Say that is Blade Runner with a Star Wars skin is like, oh, so that that sounds so, great. Something actually. interesting, good... actually, cool. Something yeah. new, something that actually has care put into it. That's yeah. a fucking unheard of, especially. Well, hang on, wasn't this what fans were calling for? Wasn't this what fans were calling for for ages? Like with Star Wars thirteen thirteen and stuff like mm-hmm. that. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. we want to see the gritty underbelly of Coruscant and, like, you know, the bar where Zam is shot and like with the dart and mm-hmm. with the Camino saber dart and it has all the neon lights right. and things. 
did he just look at that scene and rather than criticizing the terrible decisions that Zam made, he's just like, oh, I it's hate like, the neon lights. It's so Blade Runner. It's like going. <laughs> it doesn't feel like Star Wars. It's like going. This isn't. This isn't the best Star Wars thing. This is just Casablanca with a Star Wars skin. Like, <laughs> oh, so it's actually it's actually like Star Wars spin on like a classic movie. Oh fuck me! Star Wars like wishes really it had a, a script as good as Casablanca's. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I found the film boring. Just too many bricks and screws. Uh, yeah. well, I <laughs> like cheese, true. so I never actually really enjoyed it. But <laughs> I, I also watched film, it once when I was a teenager. So too many French mm. people in Casablanca. I like I Casablanca. French. <clears throat> That's a good film. I agree. Yeah. Hey, I, bad. I love Blade horror. Runner. Go to my Theory Talks channel, I'm always playing Blade Runner uh, music. But that doesn't mean it's a good show for Star Wars. Why? The Last Jedi- Why? <sighs> well, we've, we've covered why. This, we covered this at the beginning of this stream, right? Slash the end of the last one, where I explained his kind of mentality on this. But I, so I don't think we need to repeat it, but it's just... Yeah, I'm so tired of hearing the this bores me argument or the variations thereupon with no argument given to explain that perspective. Well, no, 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 I'm not it's meaningless I'm, to me. I'm not talking about that. Like, I want him to explain to me why Andor isn't a good show for Star Wars. Well, that's kind of what I meant, right? In terms of like the tone of the genre thing of like, oh, it doesn't feel like Star Wars to me. I'm like, what do you mean? What 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 does Star Wars feel like? Ugh. Explain this to me. Ugh. Yeah, no, no, I, I get what you mean. We don't we don't have to rehash it. It's just like. If he's going to say this in his video, he should actually elaborate on why. And I was what's the that, most what's, ass what's that clip you used in your video? I can't even remember which of which channel it's from. That YouTuber is like, you can't oh, just say random words. You can't words. They have to just make sense. say stuff and expect it to make <laughs> sense. You have to think about what you are saying. I need that clip. I need I'll that clip it too. Later, yeah. <laughs> it's from a channel called Forest Valkai. You guys should all look him up. He's great. I will. I've, I've, you sent me one of his videos. I do need to I look have, at that. Yeah, please do. I, I actually did watch some of his videos. I just need to find that specific clip. I can't remember. I think that's from... Uh, we, we Forest Valkyrie. I, I think I... Yeah, that's Forest Valkyrie. Valkorion? <laughs> that's that's V-A-L-K-A-I. Oh, yeah. Sinine yeah. representation of a continuation of Luke Skywalker's story that I've ever seen in my life, yet it was a good movie. It just wasn't a good Star Wars movie. What the heck? I just, I don't- uh, He just called The Last Jedi a good movie. It's not. That's wrong. Huh? Well, he, he, he made that, he made that <laughs> argument that I fucking hate. I feel like High Top oh. Film started this with the whole yes. Homecoming is a good Always. movie, but not a good Spider-Man movie. Yeah, yeah. Now people said that about Last Jedi too. It's a good movie. It's just not a good Star Wars movie. To that be a good doesn't movie mean anything. and also to be a good movie that wears the name Star Wars, or to be a good Star Wars movie, it just needs to be a good movie well, that is also a Star Wars movie. So that's, that's literally all it needs. So that's, yeah, that's the thing is like, it's a Star Wars movie, cool. It's a good movie, cool. So it's a good Star Wars movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it comes down to that, that kind of like feeling policing, that genre policing. That I'm just like, well, what, what, you need to make qualifying statements to, to justify these. You can't just have this crap being thrown out here. Oh, and Attack also, just in case is... someone somehow doesn't un doesn't already know my stance on Last Jedi, it's not a good movie. It's awful. It's really bad. It's terrible. It's also but... the best sequel trilogy film. Somehow. <laughs> is it? Yeah. It yeah. Is. So, Jolly and I, we did our stream on uh, Force Awakens versus Attack of the Clones, and I think we ended up agreeing, like, the, the, the difference is overall minimal, but, like, Last Jedi might actually have a slight edge over Force Awakens in terms of just, like, Force Awakens is so broken as a story. Oh damn! Yeah. Also, I got a super chat from Robert Paulson from four 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 ninety nine. Uh, feels like theory and uh, sorry, fans like theory and Disney apologists will drive Star Wars dead. It's like watching children finger paint over a Renaissance piece. Wasted potential. Oh, he talks about the Renaissance. He's pretentious. Ah, Get him! Ah, ah, ah. You remember what a great He's time the Renaissance right. was? He's on your mouth. <laughs> hey, do you remember how much fun we had in the Renaissance? God, I Everyone missed those was days. happy and 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 just very jovial. Also, I mean, to be fair to the Renaissance, one thing you can't say is that the art was bad. They had good <laughs> art in the Renaissance. What makes good rat? D a delicious <laughs> Renaissance rat. Don't... <laughs> you know the movie ha How to Lose a Guy in Dying. 10 Days? I feel like Disney has one. Like, how to lose star how to lose a franchise in, in uh. 10 years. And now they're pouring all this money and focusing on the Ray movie? Like, are you guys not learning your lesson? Are, like, seriously? Are you not no, learning your lesson? I just don't movie. get it, man. They Again, it's also... like, you're not even wrong. Like, of course the Ray movie is a bad financial investment, but, like, you don't understand it any more than they do. 
so you don't get to talk about it. And in that very same announcement, they also announced a Dave Filoni movie too. Are you going to talk shit about that? Because mm-hmm. that's also a really bad idea. Because oh, Dave I'll... Filoni's one cinematic venture was a box office and critical disaster from 2008. Considering... I'll, I'll, mm-hmm. I'm going I'm to put this out there. I would be shocked if the Rain movie wasn't leagues better than Edge of the Empire. Oh, it well, probably so will be. I, I imagine it'll also make more money. Here's yeah. the thing. I don't feel comfortable with... Uh, as as much as I hate the sequel trilogy, I don't feel comfortable with coming to any conclusions about the Ray movie until I actually see it, because I certainly came to conclusions about their decision to have a a whole show centered on Cassian Andor. No, you you you're, you're, and you're right. Turned out. You're it's right. Like, I guess I it's guess the, the difference it's between possible. this. It, yeah. The difference is that like I look at something like oh they're making a, a Cassian Andor show. Cool. I have no investment in that because I don't care about him as a character but like there's a story there to be told for sure mm-hmm. with the ray movie i'm like what would you do would it... i don't know but i'm not going to come to any conclusions we'll see we'll see what they do well i guess this comes down to like what's fair to and fair right because like it's, it's fair to look at disney's track record and be like i sincerely doubt the ray movie will be good based on I don't like, think it's going to be good. the desperation of how it's been made and, and how they've been making films so far that being said within that pattern prediction Having seen Dave Filoni's work, I am much more comfortable predicting that that will be a trash fire than the Ray movie. Uh huh. Yeah. It'll be an interesting. It'll be really interesting when they're both well, out. We can compare the it's, two. It's kind of weird too, especially after seeing the trailer for Echo, yeah, the show those. that like nobody wanted, and then the trailer for Echo actually looks really good. It does. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I will. So I'll like, be really pleased if that movie, if that movie, if that television series is good. I, I well, seriously think I'm the only person who doesn't think that the Echo trailer looked like anything special. Here's the thing too. Uh, good, uh, I don't we also have to consider good. the Ray movie might not happen along with the Dave Filoni movie. Like Lucasfilm is infamous for canceling shit. So mm-hmm. let's not get our hopes up or down in any in any way. Like <laughs> Yeah. Nothing we'll sense done with that stupid studio. I don't get it how they can be so out of touch. Make better Star You're Wars, dude. Make touch. Mando season one and two. Make that continuous. Ugh. Oh, oh. I don't know. oh yeah that's what we need boys make more Mando season one make more Mando. 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 better than andor well, boys so there's, there's, there's a bit of there's a bit of an elephant products. in the room here um mando season three exists he hasn't mentioned yeah. that that's good so i feel like continuous mando is only going to continue being mando season three levels or worse right sure because like, well, well, where do you go from here the story is over <laughs> It's he's been on. over. They keep he's undoing the ending. The first he's in his season. He's in his little house. He's, uh... Little he's, house. Well, but now he's doing Mad- martial jobs for the fucking oh. Republic. So, well, that'll be what yeah. season four uh, is about. Well, Mad- 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 Disney four. is obsessed with uh, just putting characters in positions they're not supposed to be in. He's probably just gonna... Oh, you know what? I'm a marshal now. I'm gonna go to the other side of the galaxy to deal with shit that doesn't directly pertain to Navarro. Well, I think... I, the, uh, see, I think uh, you're the one who pointed this out. Like, they keep ending these seasons to, in a way that makes it so it's like... You could technically just end it. Right, like, yep. or you could cool. continue. You could continue it and have a season four where he's doing martial jobs or whatever. Or you could just say, yeah, but he, it ended with season three and he settled down with Grogu and that's it. Well, it's like what you said with uh, with Jolly is that these shows are designed for just like test screenings and test audiences and stuff, and then they cobble it together after they get the most approved of uh, variations of each scene. So when they do each season and stuff, they're recording multiple endings and shit. And then they'll see which one works. So then, like, let's say first two episodes of the season are a success. All right, let's do the one ending where it actually lead, leads to, a, you know, a potential future. So that's why in Mando season one, the actual lead into season two is just basically two lines of dialogue, or actually just one line of dialogue from the armorer saying, take the Jedi to its, uh, take the youngling to its own kind. And then um, the Moff Gideon surviving the crash. Those two things are what leads into season two. Other than that, that would have been a one season story. Yeah. And it would have been a fine one season story. Mandalorian season four is going to conclude with Jamie Lee Curtis dragging Din's unconscious body into a car compactor <laughs> and being like, it, it's really over this time. Mandalorian this time ends, it's over. And then it fades no out and ends, stays. And then, and then there's going to be another season of The Mandalorian that reveals that actually Mando, that was actually just a paramedic <laughs> that she killed. Oh my god. Again. <laughs> anyone, yeah, anyone could have been under that mask. Yeah. You could wear the mask. Let's continue this. What the hell happened with the Book of Boba Fett? 
Well, obviously, someone's meddling with something out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it did the consistent. Uh, getting why is it? It just doesn't territory. make sense. Is he doing? I hold on. Is he coping for the book of Boba Fett? He's coping. Is this coping is hard? This, There's is someone actually... out there who's sabotaging Lucasfilm and making all the Star Wars projects bad. Is he Even trying cope to? Theory. Is is he trying to cope for? For that abortion of a show, I think he's I think he's lamenting that it's bad, and he's like, I just don't understand why. Hmm. It's Cause... pretty obvious why. It's because John and Dave don't know what the fuck they're doing. Because well, that, that, that was created by yeah. John Favreau. That's wasn't the thing it? is like he keeps yeah. sort of just like omitting, or it's it's not even that he's omitting these things that John and Dave have worked on that he even considers bad. He's he's now basically being like someone out there must be sabotaging them. It's like, yeah. the or like, <laughs> they're just bad writers. Because, yeah, because there is this, and it, you're right to call it a conspiracy theory, right? And it tends to come from a certain section of YouTube. But they're like, oh, if these artists were just, like, not interfered with, if Disney wasn't, like, just but, you know, doing something to screw them up, they'd make good things. And I'm like, you are misunderstanding what's happening here, guys. Because, yes, Disney interferes, but not in the way that you seem to think they do, right? They'll put out, like, a, a couple of mandates, like, you need to have an action, it's a certain amount of action scenes per episode, or whatever. Because the algorithm tells us that's, you know, that'll keep people engaged. But otherwise... The shows we're seeing are the result of like no artistic oversight rather than too much. Like there isn't an artist on set or someone who's artistically inclined on set to tell these other artists when they are going bananas. To be like there is no um what's the guy who directed Empire? The guy who was like uh Lucas's right hand dude. Um Krishner. Yeah, like there's none there's uh, or Lawrence Kasdan, the guy who wrote the script. There's no one oh. like that to um rein in the George Lucases of of this new franchise, right? This so Dave Filoni just throws out lots of random insane ideas and there's no one there to be like, okay, that one could work if we tweak it. That one needs to be discarded. You can't have that one. The only the only restrictions he gets, the only regulations he gets is Disney being like, that's cool, do what you want, man. Just make sure there's two action scenes in it. Yeah. And that, that combination is awful. That's why we're getting this schlop. I you think you're just cynical. That. Did we? Did we? Yes. True. We did. Ooh, from I, Wisdom Minari for ten dollars. I, I like this this gentleman. He's he's a nice fellow. I see him around in my in my my streams a lot. Um, yeah, Goodman. He's so mad. Andor was well written and well received show. Mendo season two, especially the ending, was so ass. But remember, a stormtrooper <laughs> hit his head on it one time in a New Hope. We'll never let TK live that down. Wisdom, thank you for the super chat. It's much appreciated. Yeah, he Sheep needed to repair one. the Wi-Fi bill. Yep. <sighs> I gotta keep this open. Sorry. Mando Season 1 and 2 were literally like perfection. Mando Hell. Season 3 was the most disjointed <laughs> thing I've ever so seen. As far as from Boba perfection Fett. as you can get. Well, so it's again, it's like, I don't understand why he's saying Season 3 was bad, but then saying Seasons 2 and 1 were good. What is his metric? What's the difference in terms of like, not in terms of just like the, the level of insanity, but in terms of what they are trying to do? What would, really is the difference between two and three? I would agree that season three is worse and it also looks significantly worse, like visually, but like, um, but like, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't see any kind of like difference between them, you know, in terms of writing, not really. No, in terms of like writing quality, they're exactly the same. The only difference is that one is a more concentratedly awful version of the other. Anyway. That was just shit. To be honest, like, the first two episodes were amazing. Then after that, it was like, what happened? The first two happened? episodes Bo of, uh... Booby Fett. Of Boba Fett. What? You know, well, like, what's going on here? I don't know. Yeah, he said apparently. Boobie. He said booby. I don't know, I just feel, I feel like, I feel like... I feel like it's satire at this point, you know? It's like we just constantly keep trying to see what else they're going to mess up at this point. And it's like, I don't want to do that. I just want to enjoy Star Wars. You guys remember how hyped Star Wars fans were when Mando 1 came out? Oh my gosh. And it was like Star Wars was back. It was like after that's after The Last Jedi. And we thought, you know, like, oh my God, okay, finally. We got something to grasp onto now. I don't know, dude. I don't know. It's just, and, and you know, they don't even want to give Kenobi a second seat. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, I don't blame you, dude. Like, where are you going to go from there? Well, they don't need I mean, to go anywhere. Yeah, what, what story is there even to tell? There there really there's, already wasn't one for like what they were trying to do in season one. Yeah, now there's the super Obi-Wan's joke to just to be like really condensed, like him just being a cowboy. 
and that's it. <laughs> He's gonna help Boba Fett take over that train. Some people call yeah. me the space cowboy. Yeah, I would love cowboy Obi Wan. That's Hell all yeah. I want. Season two yeah. is just uh, Obi Wan perfecting his jump scare on the Tuscans, so they <laughs> so that he can say that they startle easily. The whole show just focused on. <laughs> yeah, nah, like literally, the, the first I'm just episode, so, I'm just so I'm so. The first episode so, is his. The first episode of his scream will be the original sound effect, and then the the season finale is the new special the new editions to the sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, well, yeah, I mean, I... and it's like, well, yeah, I mean, I don't blame you, dude. Like, where are you gonna go from there? I mean, the whole show just focused on. Ah, you guys have heard me talk about it. I'm just, so, I'm just so, I'm so frustrated. I'm so Disney. Like, I don't know, you guys, you would do what you want to do, man. At this point, you know, you you can't. It's in the hands of the fans, and the fans are going to continue to make fan films. You guys are going to continue to get roasted by South Park and even bigger Ugh. media. Well, you got roasted by South Park, dumbass. The the way he says the fans will continue making fan films, like yeah, except for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 By the way, I don't think we're going to have time for this as well as I don't really want to do this for like copyright purposes, but I really wanted to watch his fan film on this stream as well because I was <laughs> I was looking over it again last night just as prep for this and I was like this is awful. Oh, I have vague memories shit. of it's it. So bad. I remembered it being bad, but like man. No, before I went to uh before I went to LA last year for a trip, uh my friend Rowan and I, we sat in a VC and we were just cuz he's also a film student. Uh, we were just watching his fan film and we were just looking at how much they fucked up in terms of the actual production. Mm -hmm. It was so sloppily made. Holy shit. Yeah. I've seen pornos with higher production value. The effects looked like terrible. Like, like, I mean, I, I wasn't expecting like good VFX, right? But like, mm -hmm. but like, man. Well, it's kind of like, uh, well, <laughs> I really hate to say it, but Lotus, right? <laughs> yes. Hey, for all of its faults, it looked a lot better than Theory's fan film. So true. But the question is, did Theory's did did the actor for Vader have some uh racist DMs leak? He's actually no. black. <laughs> and also, no. as far as I'm aware, he and Star Wars Theory are not on good terms anymore. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah. Yeah, really? No wonder it's being delayed. He needs to find a new guy. <laughs> he needed a new Vader. Do you, think, do you think he just refused to pay him? It could be that. Didn't yeah. give him credit. <laughs> also, the writer and producer for that film is also just friends with racists too. So, like, nice. You know. Oh, I I love that idea that he made that movie and it was like, and they're like, okay, so our names will be in the credits, right? As actors, and he's like, why would I credit you? You got paid for a I job. Paid <laughs> Are you stupid? Yeah. Well, you know what's funny is actually, uh, Gavin Connor dealt with the exact opposite issue. There were people who asked to have their names removed from the credits as a result of the racism <laughs> controversy, mm -hmm. and he refused to do that. Mm -hmm. He did oh, literally yeah. the exact opposite. Oh, down, you're coming down with me. <laughs> oh, man. Uh. That's actually great. <laughs> also, what is his shirt? I'm just looking at it now, and I've been trying to figure it it's out. It's Ron with red sunglasses. Is it? Is that what that is? Yeah. I really thought yeah. it was the uh, the like critical it. drinker uh, with sunglasses merch. You guys know drinker is it blue? Sense. Well, like oh, I mean, drinker has merch. Also, Time to paint my ceiling. Also, his hair isn't his hair isn't slicked back. It's like spiky. I'm just I'm remember I'm I remember seeing an image uh, floating around somewhere of like a of like a drawn critical drinker, um, and he had like sunglasses on, and he looked vaguely like that. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Bro the new Thrawn is the critical drinker of Star Wars. <laughs> They're about the same in intellect if we're going by Ahsoka standards. Actually, that's not fair to drinker. That will come in the future, <laughs> and say. you deserve it. You really do. Because you just, you, you aren't learning from anything, and you're continuously ruling with your ego, and you guys just have no idea what Star Wars is about. It's just that this is like spurred by the $90 million budget for Kenobi. Like, let's just also, let's really just... remember that. That last, those last, last few sentences are the most, like, the least self-aware I've ever seen a human being be, because those just describe him down to a T. Well, yeah, of course, but we never said he was self-aware. Oh, no, he <laughs> definitely is not self-aware. the end of the day, there are many people at Lucasfilm who have a real good, clear understanding, and yes, yeah, I do think I have a very good understanding of what Star Wars is. Oh. First six do films, you? I think I know it better than pretty much anybody. Oh, do you? 
That's oh, crazy. I would uh, love. I would love to quiz him on the first six Star Wars movies. He know, mm. he knows Star Wars so well. Wow. The first time he invited another Star Wars related oh, oh, oh. YouTuber onto this his streams, he folded like a cheap <laughs> <really torture. is. laughs> I feel so. Like the thing is, like it's kind of like how Dave Filoni didn't seem to understand that Luke Skywalker is a Jedi by Return of the Jedi, or like in Return mm -hmm. of the Jedi. It, I think Fury and Dave Filoni have a very similar understanding of Star Wars, which is that they know what happens. They're pretty mm. well, like, they're pretty knowledgeable about a lot of, like, the lore, at least on a surface level. Nothing from, like, the EU, really. Um, but, like, if you actually ask them to explain, like, the themes and the subtext and, and like, the character work of these characters and, the, and things like that, like, they wouldn't be able to tell you, or at least not do so accurately. Um, and that's highlighted wow. pretty well. He had his conversation with Mahler after this video, where he was he was defending Luke in Mando Season 2, uh basically Mahler was saying yeah like Luke would have a mountain of questions for like uh everything that's going on because like this is an imperial ship and that's Moff Gideon and these are Mandalorians and he he'd want to know what's going on he wouldn't just show up and say hey take Grogu and leave and Theory's defense was that no he would he doesn't really care he's above all that he doesn't care bro so it's like so this crazy. is your favorite character in all of fiction and you don't even understand him on a basic level clearly I think it's I'll actually defend Filoni from that comparison you made because whatever Filoni's flaws, and he has many, but he seems like a generally well-meaning person who actually, like, I, for example, I've watched him describe uh, why Jewel of the Fates is called Jewel of the Fates, and he gave, like, a very, you know, eloquent uh, and detailed answer to that and, like, the themes at play there. So he clearly can do that, and he clearly is a good man who does care. His flaws are much more to do with him just being, like, a wildly so, out of control imagineer rather than a, a a coherent story artist then i guess the amendment i'll make is that filoni sometimes understands the deeper yeah. nuances of star wars and sometimes he doesn't he, it's a hit or miss whereas with theory he doesn't even understand the core components of what makes up his favorite character in all of fiction like man just called filoni an imagineer <laughs> like wow well he is right like that is what he does he has he he, he imagined like no, His I mean, problem it's just is... a joke because I'm a theme park nerd and Imagineers are the guys who make the parks and they actually put effort into their work and Filoni doesn't. Well, you can be a good Imagineer and a bad Imagineer. Yeah. You can you can be good at your job and bad at yeah. your job. It's as simple as that. I, I actually kind of think uh, Star Wars Theory makes me think of the Twitter history, air quotes, nerds. You know, the, the types of 14-year-old boys who, you know, they really like World War II aesthetic, you know, or they'll really like Civil War aesthetic. Um, but in reality, they couldn't tell you why anything happened. They can just tell you that it happened. Oh, so like uh, Tyler in the menu? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly like him. Thank you. That was a yeah. great comparison. Thank you. Because like, I don't think Star Wars Theory understands just basic cause and effect, considering he doesn't understand how really, really basic systems in the real world uh, work. Um, so I doubt he'd understand that for Star Wars. Um but I can guarantee he'd be able to tell me for sure that there's some battle at some point called the the the, the bumfuck op offense of, uh, I don't know, Dick Rydia or something. I don't know. He'd be able to tell me that something happened somewhere instead of just telling me why things happened. One well, of yeah. the Clone Wars is lesser known battles, that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. That's actually, that was actually pivotal, uh, pivotal for Grievous's career. So. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't, like, what, what's what's that uh that um cooking device that Tyler nerds out about in the menu? Oh, I can't. I know what it. Yeah. What? That's the packaget. Packaget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's exactly what I was thinking of as as he was describing that. I feel like Theory's more of a slap chop kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> Clone Wars. Mm. I mean. Now I'm just imagining like a comparison, like like uh, George Lucas in the place of Slowick, and he's just like <laughs> he's just like trying to host a Star Wars event. And theories, <laughs> theories, there like enjoying it, and he's like, <sighs> no, just like Luke, Lucas like invites him behind like the monitor in the editing suite. And he's like, no, sit down, sit down, you do it, you do it. You've got you, this, buddy. We believe in you. you. And just like watching him fumble it, and then like <laughs> theories <laughs> all shit. Yeah, you all, exactly. you, you, you all represent the death of my heart. <laughs> oh, yeah. He 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 like gathers like everyone in the fandom menace and like Mike Zero and like uh, Star Wars Theory and like EFAP oh, all into I, one room. And he's like, "Cool, we're gonna if, have if we're gonna have a nice dinner, and then we're all gonna die. We're all gonna go up in flames." Man. 
if there is if there is a way for AI to actually like make this, I would be okay with with someone using AI to make this film. Or we could just make it with people. We don't yeah, need that's AI true. with people. We could we could just make it with people. Yeah, <laughs> let's yeah. do it. You want to talk about mythology? You want to talk about Star Wars? You want to talk about character arcs? You want to talk about themes? You want to talk about the characters themselves? Uh-oh. What they were going through, why they did what they did. You want to talk <laughs> about force abilities? Uh-oh. See, I don't trust you, though. You don't even understand the basics of Luke Skywalker, and he's your favorite character. Yeah. No, Anakin's his favorite character, isn't he? That's Luke. No, it's Luke? Okay. Well, I mean, I when, think they're, was... they're, they're pretty much I know, I know he said that Anakin's his hero, which is uh, very concerning. <laughs> well, yeah, when, he, when, he, when he says to me, like, oh, I can explain to you the themes of anything, I'm like, go on, then explain oh, the themes man. of Andor, friend. Explain no. Explain the themes of fucking Return of the Jedi. It's just marriage problems, lightsaber techniques and fighting styles and backstories and this and that. I mean, I I know such a twelve year old holy the shit. movies and the books inside and out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so You're not the only one. stuff. It is not enough. I hate having to say. That. I say this to like my first year students. It is not enough to be like a memorized encyclopedia of knowledge. That doesn't make you clever. It doesn't make you coherent. And it doesn't make your opinion worth listening to. If I wanted that, I have Google and the entire libraries of the world to peruse. Mm-hmm. What I need from you is, is as, a, as a critic or as someone engaging with that knowledge is to engage with it. You have to take those informational pieces that you find and weave them into, together into a coherent narrative that has arguments supporting it to make a point. I don't care that you can regurgitate the minutiae of a, Wiki, of a Wikipedia article. It doesn't mean anything. He's, that doesn't make you a fan. But he knows he's these un- movies back to front. He's unironically he knows- the the know it all kid from Polar <laughs> <laughs> You know what kind of oh train God. this is? I like trains. <laughs> I really like this train. <laughs> <laughs> Pushes up glasses. This is actually a later model. Do you know that? <laughs> that's that's Star Wars theory to a T. One. There are millions of others at Lucasfilm that n- Millions. There are millions <laughs> of Lucasfilm. Thinking it of employs the train everyone. Kid. There are two thousand people who work at Lucasfilm. No, oh, there are millions. Didn't you hear him, Sheev? Millions. <laughs> There's not even a million people who work for Disney. Period. I'm pretty sure it's like two thousand. <laughs> millions of people well, at Lucasfilm. I just like that how he literally like the second milliseconds after he's like, I know everything about everything to do with Star Wars, down to the minutiae of like battles and like where fighting styles. And he's like, there are millions of people at Lucasfilm, and I'm he's- like. Okay. He's like, he's like, I know everything there is to know about Star Wars. There were at least a hundred Jedi. <laughs> yeah, there are two thousand employees. <laughs> yeah, so there are only uh, there are only eleven companies in the world that have more than a million employees, and uh, Disney is nowhere near that. I'm curious as to what those companies yeah, are. Yeah, can Holy you list them? Oil. Walmart Incorporated, number one. China Railway, number two. Ministry of Public Security. McDonald's Corporation. UK National Health Service. China National Petroleum Corporation. Oh, okay. Amazon.com so mostly... Incorporated. State Grid Corporations of China. Indian Railways and Foxconn and the Ministry of National Education of France. So basically, yeah. mostly mostly things that are like federally controlled nationalized infrastructure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes or, sense. Or like giant fast food chains. Yeah, yeah, that have lots and of face to face. Walmart at number one because Walmart's kind of freaky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Walmart employs more people than the NHS. Holy shit. Yeah. No, <laughs> they employ imagining... 2.3 million people. God damn. Yeah. I'm yeah. just imagining the train kid, but just talking about Star Wars. I want to shoot. <laughs> I know the first so six much. movies back to front. I, 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 I tell you about the themes and the lightsaber fights. And the, and did you know that there are 2 million people who work at Lucasfilm who all understand Star <laughs> Wars better than Kathleen Kennedy? <laughs> I, just want to, I just want to do the Green Goblin thing where he's like he's, re- he's reciting all this out and I just punch through his wall and I'm like finish it <laughs> strong enough to have it all too Ooh, stupid to understand it, it. <laughs> about Star Wars Sam Witwer and Dave Filoni I mean these, uh, these these are two guys that like you you can't be ha- luckier finding talent like I hate his chin uh <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry. He's the fucking crimson chin from fairly odd parents. The intrusive thoughts one. I've been I've been I've been restraining myself this entire stream, but I hate it. Oh his chin dimple doesn't even look like a butt, it just looks like an asshole. 
He's got an <laughs> asshole in his chin. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't want to do that. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> no. You know what? Now that you mention it, it kind of does like you know when you have like a dark colored cat, but its asshole is like really like stand out against its fur color. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. Like, the the, the <laughs> frame. Kind of reminds me of that. The, the, the frame <laughs> that it's frozen on it. He, it's, he, he's looking at us like guys seriously. <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 In, intr intrusive thoughts aside his appearance means jack shit to me i don't care how yeah. a person looks i care about how they think but well, if, yeah. if you're bald you're intrinsically of less value so true <laughs> yeah it's so true i don't like bald people yeah <laughs> this and having them be loyal to the brand and having them work for the brand i mean honestly at this point you would be a fool to not be hiring the two of them to work together to create <sighs> everything going everything forward. how would that even work that's so much you can't to do make. like that's two people yeah so you know how book of boba fett really suffered from the fact that jean favreau was theoretically in charge but didn't give two shits about it yeah so mm -hmm. that would just happen to like 15 other projects if you yeah did he was stretched thin that's like one of Probably the components behind one it. of the biggest issues with uh, marvel studios is that kevin feige who's supposed to be overseeing everything he's stretched way too fucking thin because now there's disney plus shows on top of the already surplus amount of films they release yearly that's mm -hmm. been cited as one of the biggest issues there and uh do we really want that to happen with Star Wars on top of already the all the issues that exist at Lucasfilm on top well, of that? Of, it kind of already has happened to Star Wars, right? Like we're getting the Acolyte and Skeleton Crew, and mm -hmm. we've had to cancel about a billion other projects, and we're getting you know the Kenobi Jeez. series and this bullshit. They and... haven't announced anything in years. It's like the fucking 2020 uh, investor call where they basically said, "Here's all the stuff that's coming in Disney Plus." They haven't announced anything since that has been produced. They're Jeez, just finishing yeah. that up. Chief, you have another uh, super chat. Yeah, I got a super chat from Robert Paulson for one ninety nine. Uh, Theory would say the final duel in the Northman is bad. Wrong. He would be wrong. Yeah. He, no, no. Like, yeah, I, I think that he'd like it because it resembles the Mustafar final duel because there's lava everywhere. No. Oh. But does it have the epic that. John Williams score over it? I don't think so. True, true. So he would he would think uh, it's bad. Uh, 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 oh god. What'd you that say? Hurts my ears. Ears. Yeah, that hurts my ears. That hurts my ears. I apologize. <laughs> you should think you're gonna shut the fuck up. Sheep shuts up. <laughs> you gave me FNAF flashbacks. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Stop! No! No! <laughs> I wanna kick him. <laughs> Can we finish this, you please? You can't kick me. I own uh, let's this. Carry on. Tired of this. Carry Green on. Green light, thirteen, thirteen. Green light, the Force Unleashed, three. No one cares about no. your junk canon. Just create good story no. stories that we love. Create the characters that we love. Embellish the characters we that it's we love. Andor. Continue their stories. Mm -hmm. Create Star Wars. Make it great. Make it what That's it was. Andor. Give it a proper, fair chance for the characters that matter. Give them the money they deserve. So who, who determines which characters matter? They'll never learn, and we'll continue. Well, it comes back to, like, who, who determines what is and isn't important. Um, like, is it just that this is a show about, uh, like, the, some of the main characters from the original films? That that's why Kenobi is super important? I, I guess that's what it means, right? But, like, we, we, did, we gave a defense of him over, like, why Kenobi might be considered important in terms of its relevance to the main story. But mm. whether or not the main story is the most important thing to be told in the Star Wars universe is absolutely up for debate well and like the thing is i used to think it was a straw man right from people who defend disney star wars that are basically saying you only want it to be like you know skywalker family centric or like it has to be it have these same characters and, and you know it can never gr grow beyond that and, I, and i'd always be like no i want it to do that i just want it to do it well and then they did it well with andor and they you know with but like but like there are uh, there are people who actually exist who apparently only want to see shows and movies that are about these characters. That's what I'm getting from this. Well, that's why the Ray movie is being made because <sighs> Disney recognized that these people exist. He, if it doesn't have anything to do with the Skywalker saga in any capacity, then it doesn't deserve a budget of two hundred twenty or two hundred fifty million. Apparently. Mm hmm. Pennies. Penny. <laughs> <laughs> Pennies. Continue to uh, be pushed towards the prequels and originals. That's all. That's all it is. That's all that'll happen. Or Andor. That's that's literally it. Andor is better than all six of the first Star Wars movies. So yes, it yeah. is. Got him. Well, let me know what you guys think about this. Love you all.
Have a no great shit. day. Oh, well, okay. Force I, you with I love you too. One of you. Kiss me. You know. You know what you can't. You, oh, you know what he can't say. Like, he can't say that we. Like on Naboo. <laughs> <laughs> he can't. He absolutely can't say that we didn't respond. That we didn't tell him what we thought. We we have. We have. Yeah. That was a good video. I think. Um. Very we well. Go oh yeah. The bingo sheet and see if we missed any. I like the idea that he's gonna he's gonna complain about the stream and then be like, but what are we do? what 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 are you complaining about, man? We're just doing what you said. But you told us to tell us what you think, so we did. Yeah, let's go go through the the bingo stream, uh, Andrew. I want to. I'm curious. I'm very okay. curious. So right now we have not Lucas Star Wars. We have pretentious fan base. It's boring. Doesn't feel like Star Wars. Tony Gilroy hates Star Wars. Uh, those are the five that we have. Okay. Um, and then the other ones are woke. He didn't say that. Nobody no. watched it. I don't think he said that. No. Too slow. That kind Did of he... does go with boring, but like I don't think he ever said it was. Yeah, I don't think he ever said slow, so we don't have to uh, check that. Disney Star Wars equals automatically bad. No. Uh, bricks and screws. He didn't bring up in this. Uh, not enough aliens. He didn't say. Overrated. He did kind of. Yeah, uh, I'd say I'd, calling I'd, it I'd the fan base uh, pretentious and and acting like. No, yeah, he did straight up say like everyone says it's the best thing ever and it's not. So he did call it overrated. Uh, worse than Kenobi. Uh, I in terms of Star Wars, I think he he probably thinks it is worse than Kenobi, but like he'd never say so. Yeah. Do we he, want to mark that down? Nah, he didn't say no. it. Yeah. Too political. He didn't say that. Uh, didn't make money. I don't think he said that. No, he didn't say that. No cameos. Well, uh, we... wait. He said it was about the characters that no one cared about. That kind of um, constitutes the no cameos one. Uh, I think that's another one, which is Andor, the guy who died in Rogue One. That's the yeah, that's, that's yeah, we'll check that. that. Yeah. We'll check that. Uh, we know how it ends. He didn't, he didn't say, say that. that. No force. Uh, no Jedi. Too dark. Too much dialogue. Not enough action. Uh, serial. I'm sure scenes. he thinks all of this, but he didn't say. Yeah, it. he didn't say them. Uh, serial scenes. And he then didn't no say that in this video, those. but he does make fun of the serial scenes constantly. Mm -hmm. And then there's nobody asked for this, which didn't he uh, say that? He did say nobody asked for this. Yeah, yeah. So we'll check that. Do we have a bingo? Uh, we have four in a row, but we do not Damn. have five. Oh, you cut it very close, theory. Mm -hmm. Well, that was that. <laughs> I'll post the bingo thing in the. What a fucking joke! Yeah. Oh shit. The fact this guy has any relevancy is just really, really sad. I mean, I could say that for a lot of YouTubers, right? There's just so many YouTubers who've got huge followings where I'm like, I, I don't like what this tells me about human beings that they that they have this many people willing to listen to them. Huh. Yeah. Which like not even just like talks, like he's terrible. Oh yeah, like just not you know. True. There's fifty, 50 thousand people have signed up to listen to Sheep talks. I mean, what the hell are they doing with their lives? Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea what that's all they about. Like that's gross. <laughs> But no, the Star Wars theory is a fucking embarrassment. Wonderful, wonderful guy. Love him. Well, he can't I say we didn't respond to him, though. Like Jolly I said. I suppose, I mean, just to, so to round it out and, and to kind of move away from Star Wars theory, but to talk about like what he represents, right? I really wish, I mean, I guess we're a kind of primitive first stab at it, right? But I would really wish there was like an online community of, of people to talk about things like Star Wars. I mean, Star Wars, but not just Star Wars, where... I could feel like intelligent perspectives were going to be put across, even amongst people who disagreed, without having to resort to like this incredibly childish. My things are better than your things. I like this. I don't like this kind of mentality. It's mm. so exhausting to have to wade through it on a daily basis. I do not like YouTube online culture in as much as I do not like all these petty creative dramas. I do not like this incessant need to to double down on the ignorance rather than like just admit that you might need to do some research or or to take the time to consider that you might be wrong. I don't know. I just I, I, I would hope that we could move towards a more intelligent sphere of discussion. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, unfortunately as long as influencers uh you know have a stake in the in the conversation, uh that'll never be the case, sadly. Well, that's why I, you know, my appeal is less to those people because you're not going to convince them that, you know, mm -hmm. as Mueller admitted, it was a career move, it's a grift. Mm -hmm. My my concern is more with those people who still have a brain in their heads, who are the, otherwise their fan base, or at least at most of their fan base, or just fan bases in general, who have the power to demand more from their creators. In the same way that like we've creators have called for ages for fans to demand more of Star Wars, 
and more of these large companies and the way they produce media. There needs to be a similar outcry, I think, for YouTube. We need people to stand up as fans and be like, I don't want to watch your content. You're appalling. Or you're not even like you are appalling as a person. Like you just are make terrible sludge content that I have no interest in watching. Right. right. Like I'm seeing all the recommended videos right now for this video. I'm seeing a bunch of what looks to be really fucking low quality, sad garbage. <laughs> Well, the kind of thing where every thumbnail looks like the same, you know, variations on the same, and like it's all got like very buzz phrase feedy kind of like titles, which Truth, is funny. Finally ranked ranking debate. Well, More exactly, and it's, fu it's, fu it's funny to me because they'll then turn around and they'll criticize what they call mainstream like media, like mainstream art media, like buzz, you know, Buzzfeed or uh, Screen Rant or whatever. And like, fair, they deserve criticism, but they'll be like, oh, they just put out like attention grabbing buzz phrase fill headlines. And I'm like, what what is it that you do? You're yeah. just you're just a YouTube variation on them. Pretty much, yeah. Everyone's out to make money, so don't try and sit here and pretend like you're making some fucking high art or you're doing this because you want to uh, honor the legacy of George Lucas like this narcissistic prick does. Um, or anything like that. You are doing it for money. And I don't really care if you do. Like, that's fine. It's a job. But be be a man and just own up to that fact. Or at the very least, like, you know, because it, it's not a binary. You can make good content that makes money. Yeah. And also just be like, you know, you can fully admit like, oh yeah, I'm making this content because I love this content, but also I do need to earn a living. So if you guys supported me, I'd be very grateful. But, you know, but regardless, I will still put out content when I can. It just the more money I get, the easier it is for me to concentrate on doing that. Yeah. That's a very fair thing to say. Right. But oh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just so disappointing on so many levels. Yeah. And that's why I hate Chief Talks. Thank you for attending exactly. my TED Talk. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but say, I mean, you're, you're describing me to a T. Oh no. I'm also. It's also no secret. I've dealt with Star Wars theory before. He. Uh, I made a video on his uh, uh, psychopathic behavior, uh, sending his fanboys over to attack uh, teenagers um, over pretty innocuous uh, differences in uh, viewpoint for how to behave in a uh, in a fandom. Where, you know, a teenager said, hey, like, maybe we could, like, be nice to other people who like things we don't like. Uh, and then Theory, being a wonderful, mature adult, decided to scream at him and uh, kick him off the stream. And then, uh, you know, his fans went after this kid and then uh, basically forced this kid into an apology. Um, <laughs> and yeah. uh, quite frankly, uh, no, no, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> you got to be a real piece of shit to do that. And I made a video calling that out. And then he made a, a stream uh, in response to my video, um, which was funny because it actually gave a nice uh, boost to my channel and viewership. So that was pretty nice. Put my channel in the algorithm for a little bit. Um, so I appreciate it. But um, the thing is with me is just like, I think uh, Theory has a lot of potential to actually do good for both Star Wars and the fans. He has the potential to uh, make cohesive arguments as to why Star Wars needs to uh, make better content. He could make videos on how the fandom needs to not be at each other's throats all the time. He could do a lot of things to help Star Wars fans, other creators, and Lucasfilm, but he just chooses not to because it makes him it makes him more money to uh, just shit on things and be a shitty person. Well, which you know, sucks, like but. Oh. Out, out, outrage makes more money than constructive dis discussion is unfortunately the case but obviously like that the power to change that lies with the viewers so yeah no that's the thing people will parrot this guy so much um i just think it's unfortunate that if people parrot him and he recognizes that too um in, I, I don't remember the exact phrase but he said something in uh, his video responding to me where it was something along the lines of like uh he just discussed something involving his fans just following what he does and stuff and it's like yeah okay so use that use that for good it's really not hard no i refuse i, <laughs> I want money counterpoint use it for bad. money a counterpoint no right. I like being. Look, if bad. I was ever in the position he was in for any fandom, I, I don't give a shit what it was. I'd be using that to fucking promote charities. I'd be using that to uh, help out other creators who just want like just a little bit of a boost in viewership. I'd be saying, "Hey, check out this guy's video. It's pretty cool." You know, like she's with your Kenobi video where you were recommending people uh, breakdowns and stuff, edits of other things and stuff. You were pointing people towards other creators that you personally like. 
Like, that's what bigger content creators should be doing if they want to consider themselves good people, to be completely honest. Oh, yeah, right. without trying to make this a kind of, um, you know, boost up Sheev's ego here, like, one of the reasons I really enjoy hanging around with Sheev is that when I came to YouTube, because obviously I come from an, a sphere of academia, I'm a, I, I'm a PhD student and I do seminars, um, the reason I came to YouTube, other than just being a huge art fan, was that I, I was a bit frustrated with the way that academics, people who have the eloquence and the intellect to really make a change and how people think and talk to people on their level and, and, and just be good teachers um just don't they just like like to stay in the ivory tower and i was like I, I would much prefer almost like the online equivalent of like socrates walking out into the streets of athens and just talking to regular people <laughs> i was just like youtube is such a powerful tool to talk use art to talk about really interesting things and excite people's imaginations and and, and promote people who would deserve promotion and shiv is one of those people um, who makes a real effort with all their content, who is a genuinely pleasant and kind person, who's always willing to listen to the opposing views whilst maintaining good moral values and principles. Um, and it's just genuinely a pleasure to be to be doing streams with Sheev or just to be in, in, around Sheev. And so, yeah, more people like Sheev, please, on YouTube. For the Absolutely. love of God. I would agree, but Sheev's a ginger, so... You guys are going to make me <laughs> cry. True. Gingers are kind of cringe. I am a ginger, yeah. Yeah. And, it, and I'm you blushing. Can't, you can't cry. You have no soul. <laughs> well, devil may cry. The devil has a soul. He's, really he's better than Ginger. You're right, Jolly. <laughs> we just need we just need more people who are able to just at least hear other people's perspectives and uh, be a decent person, challenge other people's viewpoints while also not being a dick. Uh, and know, also while maintaining contribute something, whilst also maintaining a moral standard, right? Because you know that's the kind mm -hmm. of thing. I mean, you know, my criticisms of people like Mauler are very different from my criticisms of people like Nerdrotic. I think Nerdrotic is just awful. With Mauler, it's more complicated and slightly more nuanced, where I'm like, this man is a very intelligent, eloquent guy who could be a really positive force on this on this site. But instead, he maintains this, like, uh, absurd level of neutrality. You know, he's the kind of person who's like, oh, I refuse to, like, uh, refuse to talk to anyone on principle, even if that person is borderline or even clearly a Nazi. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a platform. And I'm like, that's really dangerous. Don't do that. Um, talk to anyone who is reasonable from whatever side of the political spectrum, if they're reasonable. Don't elevate bigotry. Don't, uh, you know, yeah. take, t there are points where you have to take moral lines in the sand and say that this is more important than just like some arbitrary commitment to garnering as large an audience as I can possibly get for myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's a, that's a, we've, we've slightly wandered off topic. The point was I was praising Sheev for being a good example of the positive side of YouTube and what it can be. So kudos to you, Sheev. Why, thank you. What you can I also do think if you have too. Sorry. Oh, what what you can do if you if you can, what you can do if you have principles, you know what you what you can be if you have principles. What you can achieve. You can be ginger. What you can achieve. Yeah. <laughs> what you can achieve. Yeah. But yeah, like I I was gonna say, um, I think with uh, when it comes to the culture war in uh, media discussion that was spawned on by shit like the force awakens and last jedi and the uh, bad faith arguments on everybody's side that just spiraled into fucking chaos or you can't even talk about these movies without having you know some idiot who thinks everything is wholly subjective or some person who thinks everything is uh, completely objective and blah 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 there's no nuance and all this fucking bullshit um i think uh i think that age is kind of coming to an end i think more people are just mellowing out um mm, but Sadly, I don't think that's true. I just think it's moving over yeah. to a different platform in TikTok. But yeah, that's the thing. It's like I'm talking YouTube. I I don't know what's going on in TikTok because I don't use TikTok. Um, but I think like the the atmosphere that created people like uh, Star Wars Theory and his Grifter Age, or people like uh, fucking Critical Drinker, or even you know people on the opposite side of the spectrum who are equally as insufferable and stupid, like uh, High Top Films or Cosmonaut Variety Hour. That's um, Tom. I think those, I think that age is kind of just over. And I think we're getting people who just don't either don't care, or we're just getting people who actually uh, have something valuable to contribute. Like we brought up Sheev and then there's also people like local and then as well, like, you know, Jolly, I, I expect your channel's probably going to, you know, do pretty well once you get your videos and stuff out. Thank you. Um, you know, Andrew as well. I think your channel's going to blow up as well. Like, I think like there's a lot of people who actually have something of worth to say who aren't, so fucking biased because i think people are just so tired of how bad the conversation has gotten and i think there's a lot of people like us who are just actually dying to have good conversations about media 
what are you talking about? XQC. It was so wonderful to watch. He's, he's, yeah. He always has the be- <laughs> always has the best perspectives on everything. He's so nuanced and kind and open hearted, mm-hmm. and not at all the well, absolute scum bottom of the barrel that humanity produces. It'd be nice to watch XQC from the back end of a uh, sniper scope. But what- well, that was that was the joke I put on Twitter, right? When he was reacting to like the <laughs> images of Gaza being blown up, and I was like, oh I would, God. you know what? I I, I, you know, I I think he should be allowed to react to that from inside Gaza. Why don't we put him in North <laughs> Gaza and then he yeah. can react? That'd be really funny. Um, <laughs> that'd be the weirdest Mr. Beast video. It was like so lots of people. <laughs> put, I put QXC XQ. in the middle of Gaza. <laughs> 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 You're welcome, internet. Dude, if Mr. Beast did that, I'm like, you know what? I take back all my criticisms. <laughs> like, uh, uh, no, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're going to be heading towards better times on YouTube in terms of the media discussion, just because there's going to be a lot more people who are like us who are kind of just, just tired of this pathetic atmosphere. I'm just imagining the Simpsons meme, you know, where it's like, what would the world be like without lawyers? It's like, what would the world be like without reactionary YouTubers? And it's like everyone dancing in harmony. And it's like, Ugh. <laughs> that'd be beautiful. <laughs> Uh, well, react that was harder. <laughs> it's just, yeah, just react harder. That was the end of this video. Are we? Is there anything to follow up, or are we ending the stream? I think I'm gonna end it. Uh, just because I got yeah. some stuff I need to do. Uh, yeah, I've, got, I've got some Belgian waffles I need to eat we're, with maple syrup. We're gonna have to do the. You have the, cheese to eat. We've got to. No, we've got to. Belgian we've gotta waffles. Cover, we've got to cover the Skyfall video at some point. That mm-hmm. shit was <laughs> like, like, like chat. I I gotta tease this. I'm sorry. Chat, there is a there's a private video on my channel that's just a recording of just C, Sheev, me, and I think TK uh reacting to this this video attempting to respond to Sheev's Kenobi critique or a part of his critique. Uh and it's very fucking amazing. Um Can we throw in the video on uh on my video as well? Oh, uh yeah, I guess if we ever did do uh like a stream actually responding to the that video we could we could do both although yeah, his yeah. video his video and your video is really long i don't know how we could just able to plow get through, through it like i mean my arguments i they're pretty concise overall so i could just he also throw them mostly out there skips quickly. over yours so he mostly goes yeah. after airborne so yeah i need to uh i need to get some food guys so okay yeah. well this has been let's, fun. let's do a wrap up Cool. Uh, thank you guys so very much for watching. Uh, uh, I didn't think of an outro for this, so you can... Uh, thank you very much, everyone on the panel, for being here as well. It's always uh, nice to be yeah. with you fine fellows. It's nice It's nice Is to it? have you guys here. Andrew's also here. Um, <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you can click right here.